Hello and welcome to the Yacht Club, your weekly bar citizen, where we talk about all things Star Citizen, have a great drink, hang out with friends, and uh, talk about this game and not necessarily prioritizing in that order, uh, but we're here to have a great time, talk about Star Citizen, talk about what's been happening. Oh my goodness, Citizen Con, so much to talk about. So sit back, grab your favorite beverage, uh, put on your favorite Star Citizen jersey, sit back and join the conversation because it's going to be a lot of fun. If you do have questions, if you do have big questions for the cast, uh, put in uh, exclamation point question in chat and that'll pop up a link to a form. You can put that in. We'll go through those questions at the end of the, at the end of the, the, uh, the discussion. Um, and we'll deal, deal with those in a panel si side format. Hope everyone's doing really well. Uh, hope you had a great week. Hope you had a fantastic citizen con, uh, just like I did. Uh, we'll have a lot to talk about. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Um, why don't we go around very quickly with the with the group and say hi, uh, just to let you know uh, 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 Doc Murray couldn't make it today, uh, but we hope to have him back for next week. Um, Joran, how was your week? How was your citizen con? Sam, you're ignoring Callie, who just showed up with 168 ah, people. Sorry. Callie, <laughs> welcome, 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 Raiders, welcome everybody. And for those of those of you who don't hey, know, Callie. Who, Sam, you want to give give them the, the no, you, the, you go for it, you go for it. So we are your weekly virtual bar citizen. Uh, always talking about the week's news and events in Star Citizen with STEM Citizen, Ben Arian and myself, and usually Doc Murray with special guests every week. This week we have Ioconia and Griffin Gaming. We've had Callie on before and hope to have her on again real soon. Um, just asking T if we've got her, got her schedule because she's, she's so much fun. So glad you had I hope you had a great stream. Glad you uh, came by and wanted to hang out with us because we've got so much to talk about here this week. Um, it was just amazing. I was uh, uh, lucky I was able to catch most of it without too much wife aggro. And we've got a hype train. <laughs> Woo! Woo -hoo. Fantastic. Um, only missed little bits here and there, but I caught caught most of it. Uh, still rewatching everything. It's one of those things you got to watch it two, three times if you really want to fully di digest it. Uh, especially that last two, two, two and a half hours with Chris and and Rich Tyrer. That was um, amazing. And poor, poor, poor Stim was having a great time at Equinox in Columbus, Ohio. <laughs> flew out there from uh, from Vancouver and missed most of the, most of the uh, most of the show, but you had a great time, I hear. You got it. We'll go through a little bit about what the Equinox event was all about, which was amazing and definitely uh, worth going in April next year and again at uh, uh, around the same time around CitizenCon. Uh, because it's it's awesome. It's absolutely awesome. Um, it, it, you think about the whole equinox idea. You know, the equinox is in the in the spring and in the fall, right? So it's just fantastic to to see that. It's at the turning of the seasons, right? So, um, uh, what a great time it was. Um, we'll go into it a little bit more as we go throughout the show. Uh, but I just have to say, it was so engaging. It was so um, uh, so so fantastic to see all of the all of the other star citizens that I caught none of the show, which was being simulcast for, throughout, <laughs> throughout the entire uh, uh, land center, the entire venue while we were there. Uh, but it was okay. I got to watch them on the flight back. So not a worry. We have lots to talk about. Uh, Griffin, how is your season going? There's, sh oh. there's Shadow Kim. So, sorry to hey, hey, Shadow. Shadow. How are you doing? Uh, hopefully, uh, Stim told you why I couldn't make it. Uh, I had uh, death in the family. been uh, one of those things. Uh, going on but we're not going to talk about that yeah. we had a great saturday glad y'all had a great time i saw lots of great pictures um hope i can make it ne next year it looked like an awesome time and Don't we'll hold it on citizen con day <laughs> and, and we're going to go into equinox later so uh shadow can reach out to uh, t nicer if we can have you pop in for uh an additional slot here It'd be great to have you on um uh but we're going to dive into that a little bit later griffin how is your uh citizen con how, how's your week been Week has been good, busy as always, but week has been good. Uh, as far as CitizenCon, it was enjoyable. This was the first year that we did our own watch party, which uh, was interesting. Uh, but we had a great time. We did a little VIP uh, subscriber, follower, meet and greet an hour beforehand. So some of the people who've been supporting us the last few years got to talk to us, got to talk to each other. And then we sat and chilled and enjoyed ourselves, had a real good time and uh, enjoyed the presentation this year. So, yeah, another fun year. Very nice. And then on Saturday, uh, Soul Citizens and Yacht Club are putting on a post-con post virtual bar citizen. 
uh, where we're going to go through panels. We're going to go through each panel, not watching the panels, but we're going to go through discussion topics and all those panels. So if you've been wanting to talk about what you've seen, uh, we'll have the we'll have the link. We'll post it a little bit throughout the show. T. Nice. If you don't have the link, please reach out. Excellent. There it is. Uh, it is going to be a Zoom call. Uh, currently, we have a hundred over 120 people registered. Uh, we're pushing for 200 this year, guys. If we can get it, it'd be great to have a, a huge uh, a huge uh, group come out. Um, CIG comes out each year. We don't give them obviously we don't pressure them in any way, shape, or form, but they love coming. Uh, so we've got various members from CIG. We've got great streamers that come and join in. And of course, there's everybody that uh, you know and love that you see in your in your uh, Twitch channels as you're hanging out, you know, uh, all the way throughout the week and throughout the year. So it'll be great to get together to see some faces and actually connect. So uh, we highly encourage to, to use a camera if you do join, just so you can really have that more personal connection. But it's not a requirement. Uh, you can come without a camera, but we'd love... Uh, for you to come and have a chance to get to know one another uh, and reach out to meet some of the awesome people that are like-minded and love what you love. So please join us on and Saturday. Don't forget the giveaway. We've got a giveaway running. Yes. Okay. We have a giveaway right now. What are we giving away, Jordan? We are, we are giving away a Crusader Spirit E1 Executive uh, Passenger Edition. Ah, perfect. That's what, I, that's what I'm getting and uh, love it. So exciting. We'll talk about that later as well. Sounds good. All right. Uh, Iconia, how was your week? How was your citizen con? So I was off the whole week. I spent the whole week in San Diego, uh, walking around with nothing but my backpack, waiting for uh, one uh, Twitch con to start. I did that for three days. It was so awesome. I recommend anybody, everybody to do it at least once. Um, we caught uh, the citizen con so much information it was just like a whole week of nothing but awesome time it was so good fantastic fantastic and i see you're wearing an excellent uh, uh jersey that you have on there to, of course yes Damar like, rally support to Damar rally you got to do it please sign up and, and i understand yeah. last time you ran pretty much the whole course for 14 hours is that right so the last day of my rally, um, there was an issue where it seemed like all the power plants would die like after five and a half hours. So both our cyclones died at the exact same time. And we were about to give up because couldn't do anything. So I just like, you know, F, F this, I'm going to keep running. So I just kept started running. And, um, you know, the, my two supports, uh, Verdi and Danger Boost, they were following me and we, we just kept running. Nice. Was your middle finger like stuck in the position for that entire next week? <laughs> um, I'm not gonna lie, my fingers were tired. They were tired, and there was uh, there was mention of just put a, just put something on the keyboard. But mm -hmm. I was like, you know, I don't want to win that way, or I should say, I don't want to finish that way. I didn't win at all, but you know, we got the finish, and uh, it was really good. I, it was it felt a lot better than just uh, all right, we'll and just try it again next year. Nice, nice. Well, uh, kudos for you for for putting through the dedication for that and and knowing what's most important at the end and that's the fact that you shared that experience and had that awesome experience with with everybody so that's really good well um, we're doing hurts to hurt locker soon too awesome uh do, do you know the dates do you want to do a quick shout out for it i believe it's october 29th All right. we're at, at mo esports oh, wow. and if you do want to put a team together they are still accepting uh teams to jump in that if, if i'm if i'm not mistaken uh, so you can reach out to Atmo Esports. I believe it's um, atmoesports.com, I think. Uh, but if you search for Atmo, Atmo Esports, it'll certainly come up in Google. Uh, and you'll be able to find they it. have a brand new Discord. So they've come back to Discord from Gilded. Um, they, they, I, I think they had better comms in Gilded with the nested comms. But our, I, the whole, everybody's in Discord. So they came back. Yep, yep. Can't beat them, join them, right? Yep, and speaking speaking of uh, all the Atmo esports events, uh, we've got Nar Nargos Nargos Verge uh, here in, uh, in in chat. He he is the founder, um, leader leader of Walkers of Sigma. He is the uh, that they are the, uh, the the main security organization for all the Atmo esports events, and they do an amazing job. Um, but beyond that, they are just one of the best orgs. If you're looking for really active 
fun, good people. Uh, that they're they're just absolutely fantastic. I, I think Callie is uh, is part of uh, part of Walkers and uh, so uh, Allie also. Uh, yeah, I think think uh, I'll, I, we've had all them on the uh, on the show. You know, we should get Nargo on the show. We've sometime. we've had him once, but it'd be great to have him back again. Yeah, yeah, yeah certainly. Back. Yeah, absolutely. Do it, Nargo. Yeah, definitely come back, Nargo. Uh, let's uh, connect with T-Nightster. It'll be excellent to have you back on. He's also the preeminent borrower of Idrises or Idri. Idri. <laughs> Idri. Yes. Um, uh, Maiden, how was your season con? Um, I I enjoyed it. I know we'll talk more about specifics and everything, but um, I think overall, I there's a lot I loved about it. But at the same time, there was that um, the thing I've said in several. Uh, other streams is just that I kept waiting for that moment of of you know dad bringing out the um, secret present on Christmas morning from the garage the hidden one that no one knows about you know and and that just didn't happen this time so I was I, I left it a little disappointed and that's oh. just my honest feeling at the end of it but there was a ton in there that was good and you know there's a lot of new tech that's looking awesome EVA tech is I'm excited about especially um were you expecting Chris Roberts to, to be on the show? Because they said that he wasn't even really going to be. Yeah. No, not really. But the way Jared described, he, he said something just before Chris Roberts was on for that discussion. And he he made it sound like there was some big announcement about to happen. And then I, I think all he meant was that Chris was still sitting next to him for a discussion. And that was the big surprise, but nobody got it. And we're all like, what's happening? What's next? And, and what are they going to announce? And it I never was happened. So. I, per, 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 personally, that exceeded my expectations by. No, it's so, great. I mean, yeah. And and yeah, we did. We didn't get that 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 wow reveal. I I, I love your analogy of bringing out the big special Christmas morning uh, present yeah. from, from the garage. Right, right. I, I, yeah, I, we've always gotten something like that, like the 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 four hundred flying into the cloud sandwich and the pyro um, last year. Yeah, last, last year. Which we all bought four hundreds or multiples thereof, because um, it was carrot so going through cool. the jump point. Yep, yeah. carrot going through the jump point. I, we've always had those, those kinds of things. Um, so yeah, I, I I guess I can see how the community wanted something like that and has been I trained to expect something like that. Um, I, I guess I've just I've reduced my expectations so that when we get things that we weren't expecting, uh, and I. I I, I thought it was a little. Um, I was a little annoyed by the community uh, during that whole segment because so many people were saying, it's "Like, oh, he's talking so much." It's like, this is what people have been begging for for years. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I wanted to strangle a nerd. <laughs> Joe, Joe, run, Joe, run. Some people beg for it. Some people throw tomatoes at it. It's been the that way for Chris for a while. So it's just yeah. that's the way it is. If you, it's, they can't win either way, either they don't hear from them enough or they hear from them too much. So we we they got what they asked for either way. So there you go. <laughs> uh, Sandy yeah, Sanderson and, says, and "Oh no, someone hold him back." I'm in the camp of, of the more the more Chris the better. I think I literally said yeah. that a couple weeks ago on the yeah. show that. Absolutely. You know, we haven't seen enough of him and all that. But, and I think we got it. Yeah. I think we got it. We didn't get we didn't get that demo with you know the hello citizen con and and all of those tropes that we're used to. I mean, I personally, uh, you know, was uh, sad that we didn't uh, get to see uh, Chris Roberts uh, berate Glenn for for not showing something off at a specific, specific part <laughs> in the demo. Uh, but we got we got a good uh, good access uh, to you know what Chris is thinking uh, in the last panel. Which was really and, good, and really a lot of Squadron Forty Two talk, which is what people were asking for. Yeah, and then people are bitching that's right. like, well, we didn't see Squadron Forty Two stuff, like, but they talked about it tremendously, mm -hmm. and I was really impressed. Anything about Squadron Forty Two is good. Yes, I, I was super happy with all the information we got. Well, guys, we're we're talking a lot about squadron 42 or talking a lot about citizen con i think why don't we dive into some screenshots that we can kind of roll through those uh and then we'll get back more into what happened at the con for each of us talk about our experiences and we'll dive into the panels and go through just what were the major touch points that we learned throughout the con uh and then have a little discussion about them all right so 
um, let's dive into, without further ado, into the screenshots, because there were a lot this week. My goodness, was it ever hard to distill it down to 22 shots? <laughs> That's what we managed to get it down to. All hosting, take a drink, so cheers. All right, cheers. Cheers. Shipyard pumpkin ale. Ah, uh, we've, we, oh, and Iconia, what are you drinking again? It's a uh, moonshine. This is a uh, moonshine from like four years ago. Very nice. And I've got some, uh, moonshine uh, from Romania as well. So it's a moonsh moonshine night. What, what do you call it? I have another in? gypsy queen of swords, hard oh, cider nice. from Tennessee. Uh, it, it's called Suica, which is, uh, it's, it's a plum. It's like a plum brandy, but really well distilled. Uh, you can, if you really look at it, you can see this one's not perfectly clear. It almost looks like Macallan as far as the as far as the, the weight to it. But you can get very very clear ones uh, that's double distilled that they call Palinka. It's Romanian in origin. Lovely. Okay, this Firemaster, thanks for the resub, and also earlier Sky Dancer, thanks for the resub. And I forget, I apologize. Somebody gifted, uh, I think Kelly a sub. Thank you for that, and any that we missed. Thank you for all for all those. Cheers, guys. And busy thank chat. you, everyone. Busy chat. And just, just a, a quick update there. Any of the donations that come through, all of the sub, um, all of the sub uh, monies that come through, we really appreciate it. Um, we take everything that comes in minus whatever Twitch takes and then a little bit for taxes. After that, everything goes back to you guys in the form of ship giveaways or jersey giveaways or what have you. So everything you're giving goes directly back to the community to grow the community. So if you want to support the channel uh, and bring more people that are like-minded to watch, then uh, feel free to contribute. But obviously, there's no pressure. Uh, We're all here to have fun. Side note, on an unrelated side note, I recently changed my name to Taxes. So <laughs> to Taxes, <laughs> can I be charity? You can make then? a lot of money. <laughs> Yeah, I think taxes beats charity by far. Um, okay, this first image is by Stick. Uh, Stick takes some fantastic, fantastic photos um, or screenshots, and this one's really good. Stick has another one. Isn't that amazing? A lot the of people lighting. out there collecting those helmets. Insidian, thanks for the resub. Sure really kiss. Twenty nine months. This one here Appreciate coming that. in from intake. It's Lots time. Titled Leaving. On a jet plane. <laughs> On a starship. Yeah. Um, all right. Uh, here we've got one from uh, this most recent Citizen Con. Uh, this one is uh, Jad Jad wearing his Yacht Club jersey, uh, as well as Segalian sitting there representing Origin. Nice. Um, here we have some uh, cargo management. This is uh, and a great example of why we need the new cargo refactor. You that are bad flying. <laughs> <laughs> this is a Lego joke. It's in an there elevator. Somewhere. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. It's cool Ooh, though. I have something to show you about Lego later. Stay tuned for that. Ooh. It's awesome. Um, this one, you know, some ships. Okay, all quantum ships look good, but sometimes they just speak to you. And this one, this one with the Invictus skin said, "Show me." That's beautiful. I still love the Freelancer. It's such a great ship. This always. one here. Go ahead. Oh, I just said always on the Freelancer. I love it too. Mm. So. This one here from, uh, which one was this? It's that last one, the Freelancer from Linear. This one is from uh, Tinville. Uh, Phoenix, just, thanks for the resub. Just showing us a great picture of that new, new I, Jeep. I love that. I love that skin. I'm waiting for oh, the nice. vehicle to say, hello, Michael. <laughs> so... <laughs> Needs a little, a little red uh, yeah. going back and forth. There. We call this the Steve, not STV. It's Steve. That's the new name for it. We're dubbing it. We're calling it like yes. Tonk. Steve. Okay. Steve. Just like yeah. Tonk, this is Steve. Uh, so, um, Ari, here's your here's your Christmas came early gift. Uh, this one was from Caffeinated Cat Girl with a with the, nice. with, with the caption of Xmas came early. Oh, it's great. That's pretty funny. Really? So Steve again, drink. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this one. Wow. Uh, this one's from Zook Zamami. I'm Shut sure up. I'm sure I'm saying it wrong. Maybe it's Z Zamame. It's like alien vibes. I was gonna say that one has such an eighties like sci fi show yep. vibe to it yeah. for a movie. Yeah. Like they're all in cryo cryostasis or something. Looks like it should be called Prometheus, even though it isn't the Prometheus. <laughs> you, how's it going man we, we have got to talk about 
So Twidget and I were, were Twittering uh, to get to the, uh, today. He was asking, who coined the term bar citizen? And uh-huh. I said, it's like, oh, well, so that was back in like 2013. It was Michael Moreland. He was like, he worked with uh, with the Wingman's Hangar, and he was like one of the first uh, content creators for Star Citizen. And Twitch says, like, what? I was his producer. Like, what? <laughs> so, wow. I, I, T, we've got to hook up with Twidget and get him on the show, and I, I want to hear about the, the, the origins of Michael Moreland's show and, and, and all that, because for anybody who was here around the, in those early, early days, and he did a, 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 one of the first really great um, and con- content uh, programs. Yes, Stars. please. That would be awesome. So oh, cool. Yeah. Serious nice. nostalgia. Even though I wasn't here back then, I've watched a bunch of those. Uh, th- this one here is also Zooks, so Zook Zamami. What a great shot. Moving on to Caffeinate. Oh, actually, this one is from uh, Siphonius. That's nice looking. Isn't it, hey? Just like with the with the reflection of the atmosphere of the planet in the bottom of that 300. That's really hot. Is that a 350R with that top engine like that? Uh, no, no, it was 325. The, no, the yeah, the, the rear engines are what's different on the 50. I don't know what that is. Yeah, the, the, the fuel Oh, it's a 315 because you can see the, uh, the, the tractor, tractor beam thing in the front. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's, it's hard to right. see the, the scoops on top because there's two instead of one or something. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It's I, nice. That's one, of my, that's one of my beefs about the 350R with the rework. You can't hardly tell the It's almost impossible to tell the difference. Because it doesn't have those two big giant twin engines in the back. It's like, ah, oh, I miss that so much. That's a great shot, Siphonius. Uh, and then we've got from Horrible Tomato, we've got a couple in a row. This one, let me get rid of the pictures here. Um, isn't that just, you know, that, that action shot? You know, it's kind of the Top Gun uh, chase cam, uh, you know, but right up there on the side mount. That's beautiful. Looks like an Invictus paint again. Hmm. Looks executive-ish, you know, with that gold. And then this one. Oh, what a great shot. Nice. Very alien looking. Yeah, and that's definitely the executive armor as well. So that really stands out. And this one here from um, from Burt's. What a great Super shot. Super ultra-wide. Those shots are awesome, especially if you have a super ultra wide to watch them on. Uh, but Easy. just the, the perspective is just beautiful. And then Mystic Star comes up with a few. She has a whole series. Um, Steve, drink. Just, just showing Steve, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was Saturday Night Shenanigans. We took our took our Steves out and drove around uh, my flex. So at, at the end of CitizenCon, they raided Atmo Esports, and they had already had, like, I don't know, 30 or 40 Steves out, and they had a race planned around mm. uh, Microtech City, which is really awesome. I was sitting next to Segelian, um at the at the Equinox event, and he was uh, flying camera for the event. So it was really cool to see all of the Steves take off from the starting line. It was probably one of the most spectacular launches that I've seen because there was a lot of them to start off with. I don't know the amount, but must have been 40 so, or 50. So it was a massive amount. And, and it was right at that time of day where it wasn't pitch black so you couldn't see anything, but all the headlights were on. And so it really made the vehicles stand out from the terrain. And you could really see the perspective of where they were battling and vying for position. And then, of course, there was an explosion about four seconds in. So <laughs> that was the tone for the whole race. It was pretty cool. Yeah, going onto the ice from the snow, you have to slow down to like five meters per second. Otherwise, instant explosion. Yep. We learned that the hard way. This looks like Rocket Elf. Yeah, it is. Yeah, a great ah, one. Uh, there's, tell there's her, a... her interesting stories. This one says, when the NPCs notice you taking screenshots. <laughs> I, I feel like that NPC should be on a Genesis Starliner helping pa- yep. flying patrons. Yeah. Bobbing. Working the Mixmaster. What, what do you think about the Mixmaster being on the uh, on the E1, Jorn? Uh, I 
Like, it's great. Um, I, I, I was never, like, huge into the need for the whole Mixmaster thing on the Genesis. Um, I, 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 I want to have one just for my own use. Be able to get drinks and coffee and cappuccinos and tea and all that good stuff. And Smiffy Joe Bob reminds me that he was with us during shenanigans ah. on Saturday. Smiffy's, Smiffy's so vying for some Don't attention. Don't drive fast onto the ice after <laughs> I go fast onto the ice. <laughs> Mystic Star! Hey! Thanks for resub! Good to see you, Mystic. Uh, this picture here comes from Siphonius. And then we have another Rocket Elf one. 42 months. That is a lot of months. Thank you for that, Mystic. Been with us since the beginning. Absolute treasure, Mystic. Uh, and then Mintake. And we've got two more after this. So this one from Mintake. This one is Girl from the Clinic. New hair tech. Looks good. Yeah, we don't get to have those as, as characters. Only NPCs. Looks like it looks like her hair's been blow dried. And then are you guys ready for these last two? Ooh, that's beautiful. Mm, very uh -oh. cool. This, this one's from Captain Raoul. Isn't that amazing? This is the game we're a part of, guys. It's not a game! <laughs> Every developer at CIG called it a game, so... I know! <laughs> Should be a crack. So, so triggered. <laughs> and then and then this one's from Haskaha. I was going to say, this has to be Haskaha. <laughs> yeah. That level of detail, uh, that story in the eyes of the of the subject. It's something else. Yeah, Rural does great great work. He's another one of those uh, leading community yeah. photographers. Yep, yep. I got you, Smiffy. I got you. All right. Um okay, so moving on to uh, the next segment of the show is so the web community. Um, why, don't, why don't you talk about, uh, pick a topic, uh, Joran, while I build that part of the show. Citizen God, uh, it's the, that's the topic of the day. It was just, uh, I, I was I was thrilled. I was, uh, it exceeded my expectations. I mean, how, how did uh, you call him, Gr Griffin? I'm, what did you think coming out of Citizen God? About Citizen God in general? Yeah, I know, o overall, I big picture impressions. Oh, um, you know, I, we talked about this on our show on Sunday. Um, I liked, I like it. Um, I think that what's missing in Joran, you've experienced this before. Maybe some other people in the room have. A citizen con, I've always said, is fifty percent CIG, but the other fifty percent is the community. And you know, the first year we did the virtual cons, it was really nice. Um, the fact that we still were able to connect. But this is our third year now, and I'm missing the community aspect of it. Uh, the information is great, technical information but again even those of you who were at the 2016 con one of the most disappointing citizen cons ever i still came back home and thought i had a great time because i got to meet with community and be around people which, so which, which one was that? 2016 in la the year in 3.0 there are 2.6 3.0 years um so i guess for me um i i miss that aspect i'm hoping that next year we are back in person getting to see people meet people be around the devs um as far as the information that was presented i think they gave us a good uh, idea of where they are technically and what they're working on uh very promising um i don't want to say next year is going to be the big year because we say that every year but next year is going to be the big year so that's pretty much how i feel about <laughs> this citizen guy it, it, it is funny how we've been saying that every year. <laughs> Except for so there will be more gifts from the garage next year. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, I mean, think... I mean, yeah, I mean, and, and let me say this real quick too. There are some other things that uh, Ariana, some things that they didn't talk about, which was kind of okay because we know they're working on it. But the right. fact that there are a lot of things that are within reach now that before were being developed. So, the Vulcan Gen 12, uh, PES, and then meshing. We're we're at that point now. Those are the last hurdles to to bring all together at this point. So that's one of the reasons why I think next year is going to be a good year for us with 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 uh, this whole project. Black Banks, thanks yeah, for the fast track that, that EVA tech, because that that opens I, up so much if that was in game right now. It's so cool. I, I want them to I, confirm that there is some kind of sticky hands, magnets, or something on the pulling on a flat surface in zero G or near zero G, sorry, Doc. <laughs> um, pulling yourself a lock that's like please just say like yes, there's magnetic gloves or something. Because I, I was triggered by that. Seriously triggered. <laughs> 
Which part was that? <laughs> The, the the pulling the pulling the pulling yourself across the flat surface in space with nothing to grab Spider onto. Moon, basically. Right, yeah. right. Yeah, on, on the on yeah. the big like comma ray or whatever it was. Yeah, so it's like yeah. I'm, I'm just. It has to be sticky hands, magnets, something. Yeah, like. We're getting mag magnet gloves, everyone. You heard it here first. Yep, magnet gloves, sticky Confirm. gloves, <laughs> spider <laughs> spider gloves. Yeah, we really upset if you can't do Superman in space while you're. <laughs> Well, actually, aren't they working on like like that gecko technology, like gecko, the the the, the, the super, oh. like they're like microscopic velcro that you can like grab on. When you say they, you mean like in real life? Sci yeah, sci okay. scientists type people. Yeah, I Science. think that was a while ago. Yeah, I mean, so in um in sports, uh, especially soccer, the you know soccer as well as football, being able to you know grab. A ball is very very important either to save a goal or to catch a catch a uh, touchdown or pass so there there definitely is uh investment in that i just don't know if they've decided yeah you know 80 percent of the way is good enough with foam <laughs> some sticky foam citizen, citizen shenanigan says uh it's the eva jets pushing you against the surface uh, uh, sticky, were... sticky fingers is an alpha yeah yeah, at Alpha, um, th they were saying that you are pulling yourself. So it was you're you're pulling yourself, and then you put and then you push off. So it, it's definitely some kind of sticky hands. And so Mint off, so it's sticky gloves, it's spidey senses, and web slinging tractor beams. And, and Mintake says it's not <laughs> soccer. And Mintake, I 100% agree with you. It is football, but when you use both soccer and gridiron American football in the same sentence, you have to differentiate somehow. <laughs> That would be a little bit easier. Do any of you ever have lucid dreams, like where you can fly or do? As a kid, things? I had them all the time, Ari, all the yeah. time. Cause, yeah, because I get, I still have them from time to time, but I used to get them much more as well. Probably because I used to sleep a lot more than I do now. But, um, but yeah, I, I would all have a recurring one where flying was like that, where I would have to still touch something once in a while to keep myself going. And, and it just reminded me of that so much. It was such a weird feeling seeing that as he was pushing himself along and shooting further. It's, it's so cool. I can't wait for that. It's going to be fun. Yeah. I, I, I feel like this is going to be a really long show. <laughs> I was about to jump into one of my lucid dreams as well. About flying, so <laughs> I'll, I'll save everyone from it, but I remember it to this absolute, actually I'll say it very, very, very quickly. Um, I started off like falling through these clouds and then falling through a, a, a V of these like quicksilver mer mercurial like um, geese that were kind of flying by trying to grab them because I'm falling and I, and I don't know what's going on. And then all of a sudden I figure out, you know, that I can fly and end up as I get closer to the ground, it's, it's this ocean world, like this archipelago kind of thing with these sort of Greek um like pantheon type structures sort of on e each island and this is how the community lives and they just fly from island to island it was just the coolest thing that's awesome but we digress um why don't, why don't we move into <laughs> <laughs> the community content okay weird all right um so uh here we are here's the first one um kind of cool uh one of the best places i could think of to watch the uh Season con, yeah, but that was very cool. I can't wait till we have uh, have screens working in, in game. And I wonder if they'll be able, if they'll let us be able to stream things. And it's kind of immersion breaking, but oh, some of us mine's want, bigger. Some of us want that. <laughs> well, the eight eight ninety TV is bigger. Do you? But like, yeah. So do you want to stream like the con in game, or do you want to stream like any IRL content, or you just do you just want streaming to be? lore specific in, or in IRL, in game. In the IRL content we can do that in, in second life they, they've, they've got things where you can stream like uh youtube into a television on your wall in your sure house. like second life makes sense because you could have all kinds of different things in second life but what about star citizen what what, what does everybody think do you want to have irl stuff in star citizen or do you want to yeah, stick more to law lore and in they game could just movies? they could just pipe twitch if, if it's in the star citizen category like that like they're doing with the new community hub Mm -hmm. I like that. They could have them Mako transmit it. Yeah, Mako stuff would all be, you know, in game, right? It wouldn't be, you know, like Twitch showing up or or anything like that. But... Walking through Area 18 and just looking at a random monitor and seeing, you know, some Star Citizen, you know, that would be kind of neat. Mm. Besides ads. 
totally agreed. Yeah, right along. So the next one, um, wow. Happy birthday, Star so Citizen. Yeah, That's so cool. this is tweeted out by, by Cloud Imperium Games Twitter, the uh, the official corporate Twitter. Happy 10, ten year anniversary, and guess whose photograph that is on the cake? Is that yours? Oh, has to has. Mine. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I don't know. Did you take it? <laughs> of course it's Asuka. It's like, <laughs> That's a beautiful shot. Like, Asuka, Ha, nicely done. Best, best photographs in the, in the community. Nicely it done. Oh, and look, I, I look love at that, that cake. I love that, that type up there. Somebody did some, some place. I'm assuming that that is all edible cake material somehow. This I don't know. looks like fondant, but that? with ablative plating. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> it's ready for a vulture that is some next level cake skills right there wow next next okay <laughs> I, gotta, I gotta keep things moving here yeah the uh <laughs> the, the squeak is hitting too hard covered. too hard too we quick okay a lot of content. we're already an hour in all right landing pad Yeah, this is pretty funny. But, okay, I'll land there. It's like, you're blocking active flight lane. Make it the area immediately. This is where you told me to land. Fine, I'll leave. Are you closing the hangar doors? You're getting fined, you criminal. <laughs> this is, Logs off. That, that, this is a normal day in Star Citizen. <laughs> All right. Oh, so this was another uh, tweet uh, from the from the China, China Bar Citizen for the, the retribution. This retribution model was amazing. Wow. 15 feet long. Look at the look at the detail on all the all the guns and the greebles and and they so, so someone did this from were there, very 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 minimal. Uh, were there any other ships there for scale? Um, they had a little uh, MSR in the front of it, wasn't it? But, this, but, it, but it, they weren't to scale. They weren't match scale. Uh, yeah, yeah, not not to scale. Yeah, look at those guns. Wow. All, all that. And it just and, and the lights and the engines. I mean they did such a great job of this. Absolutely incredible. That's really well done. Yeah. Wow. So I don't need to go through the whole thing, but I think yeah, I mean, it gets it across. It's really very really very, very awesome. Um, I will I will link that over into the chat. That's incredible there anybody wants to check that out all right link. this one here guys does anybody know what this bar. is a panu cube that's right this... and painted with lights in it and everything holy crap this is so so cool this is amazing that's pretty awesome so this was done by the Starfab guys uh the uh, as well as the the jrdf crew the same they're the same people um it's an unofficial jrdf uh, stuff so it's done more by the by the community members not necessarily wearing their jrdf uh, hats uh, but such an amazing uh, piece they put through and there was a, a puzzle to it at the equinox event um, and you had five clues and you had to go through their lore based cues clues and you could sort of work out what they what they were um, and if you got it right uh, you had a chance to win an in-game uh, cube banner cube so absolutely fantastic uh, Iconia, what are you showing there? Just showing what one of the Banu Cubes look, cards look like. Nice. That was your goal. Cool. Is that a scratch thing on the back? Yeah, you scratch it off. It has a code. Make sure you enter it in all caps. Nice. Very, very neat. So that was amazing. So um, one of the Equinox people won that one. It was a uh, it was a great uh, lots of lots of draws happen at Equinox. <laughs> That's pretty funny. So so this is inevitable. Full screen, Stan. Full screen. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely inevitable. Yeah, yep. had to happen. I, I would also put the freelancer where the Mercury Star Runner is. <laughs> Bert, thanks for the reset. So this is the big controversy over the, uh, the the spirit. Nobody knows what the size is. So CIG did their 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 normal, uh, c completely 
flawless rollout of a, of a new concept ship to sell millions of dollars worth of uh, worth of funding, and we have no idea what size it is. <laughs> I think they may have come out and confirmed it, but they the stats were just all over the place, too small, different everywhere, uh, cargo on the E1 and the A1 when they don't have any cargo. Um, yeah, it's... Uh, it's just, a concept ship still. <laughs> what are people it is, expecting? It, 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 it's a concept, but they they know what it's supposed to be. They just didn't vet their information, and they do this every time. And I, it's like, I I love CIG, you know, I'm the community white knight. But this is where I become a beige knight that I will call them on the things that they have not gotten partially polished and ship sales are their products they are selling ships yes i know technically legally it's a pledge people are buying spaceships and it's like going to buy a car and you want to know what the specs are in your car you want to know okay what's the horsepower what's the mileage oh you know, and what's and how how long is it it they know these things when they build it but then when they put it up on the website for sale and they have different information all over the place and just like nobody has vetted anything and they had some intern throw the shit up and i just i'm so disappointed that they just it's very very disappointing because they're better than this and they, they are and there's there's one I, photo it just shows a guy standing behind it and it just looks so huge compared yeah. to some of the other ships of its size mm -hmm. yeah i mean it it looks almost mercury star runner sized we know it's a little bit smaller but this published specs didn't it, they start off saying it was like 25 meters they really think it's like 35 meters but we're really not quite sure so but i'm still buying one i'd like i didn't care what size it was or what the specs were probably. it's probably cold out that's why it's smaller <laughs> did, did anybody did everybody pick one up uh i'm getting an e1 on friday okay i bought an e1 I right. bought a C1. Nice. I want that tractor beam facing backwards there. That's really cool. My yeah, wallet stay closed. Smart man. I got an E1 and a C1. That, that's where my my joy lies. But Black Bank says that uh, I guess it shows how inept their marketing is. I I think they just rush too much. And I think they are always rushing. And I, I, in one aspect, I appreciate the fact that they always feel time pressure and they're always pushing to move forward fast. I, I think I think is great. But there's certain things where, like you know, just take a little time, have a few people, you know, just double check something like that. All right, so we we're moving on to each individual section. So for Pyro and Planets, what did you guys think? Griffin, what what you what you think of the uh, I mean, beautiful? Um, yeah, beautiful. We uh, the most we'd seen previously in the past were the concept drawings that CIG was working on. Uh, they'd given us a couple of clips before, some short scenes, but this was greater in detail, uh, showing the cross biomes, uh, the work that they're doing. I, I, it's a little bit of loss because the lore about Stanton or around Pyro is a little different. I do miss the fact that we didn't get our lava Mustafar planet, but I, I know that they put the habitable one in for us, which is nice. There's a lot of room for a lot of stuff to happen here, which is great. And obviously seeing the technology uh, getting better with the, the mountain ranges, the, the monumental stone workings, the flora that they put in. I was praying, praying that CIG was going to show us some fauna. Uh, I, I'm waiting for critters to be running around at this point stuff to be scared of when you get out of your ship at night um, but yeah but to see the enhancement that they did at pyro 3 was really nice compared to the uh the, ex uh, the show that they gave us a year ago when we saw them land there so that was really really nice the sky box was amazing was beautiful um the, the nighttime shots and oh. lastly mm -hmm. it looks like they've improved the water tech uh and i hate to say water because I, I, you know i don't want to push on water all the time liquid tech uh it could be something else 
other than water, hopefully at some point. But um, other than that, I, I, I thought it was a great presentation, great way to open it up, because, of course, everybody's looking forward to Pyro. Um, and, and I think that they're definitely not showing us things like we know that they've started doing uh, outposts and bases. That wasn't what we were supposed to see right now. I don't think I think they want to save that. But to be able to see how the worlds have all developed and have their own style and look was pretty amazing. Yeah, Iconia, Ariana, what uh, what what do y'all think? So, so I completely 100% agree with Griffin. Um, it, it's all the landscapes are absolutely gorgeous. It's it's nice to see them doing more than just uh, complete empty barren stuff like Daymar and such. It, it feels like each each moon has its own, each planet has its own personality. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I very, very much like we have now, I'm with 12 moons and four planets, every single one of them has its own unique personality, and they're doing that again here through um, uh, through this. And we're run, run, running a poll. The poll, just, the poll just ended. It oh, just, I missed just, it. Yeah, it just ended. The C1 came through, uh, oh, just by a hair, winning by one point. I didn't even get to vote. I didn't know there was a poll. Nobody called. Nobody said there was a poll. Well, I, I, Griffin was was talking, and I, <laughs> I I thought it was rude to interrupt. So. Oh, sorry, but uh, yeah, I think the C one is pretty popular. So as 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 far as I I think I I, I love the quality. Um, it, if you want to go back to the the start the start point on that, so we just kind of run through. Uh, just have a little B roll running run there. Um, the um, of, the of which one? Of, of Pyro? Yep. Yeah, yeah, just, just, where, just where we started before, so just have, have yep. kind of run back there. So the, the, the kind of controversy, I heard some comments in the community by, I I thought that they were, that they sh should have already been done with this before. You know, it's like they're still polishing this. So my perspective on this is that they, they had things that they could have rolled out before, but they can't deliver it to us until they have server meshing. So... Like with, with Stanton, every one of those planets that we got, what you see now is nothing like what we had two years ago. Like Hurston has changed so many times. Every moon. <clears throat> know that there's so many I, years we've been saying, we go back every patch and say, it's like, Selen is different. Yella is different. And the, 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 the quality continues to improve. And they could have rolled these planets out a year ago, two years ago. They wouldn't be like this. And we would have got something, but I, I appreciate that they've taken this time because they can't give it to us until they have server meshing to really just add and add and add and refine. Because what's in my mind is that, okay, so this is the next system, but we have dozens and dozens of systems to go, and they have to refine their, their ability and their creativity to create more unique biomes because... I don't think any of us want to go to other moons and feel like it's like, oh, well, this is kind of like Selen, and this is kind of like Yellow, and this is kind of like Pyro 2. And, and because we're spoiled gamers, we don't want that Elite Dangerous ex experience here. We don't want to go, it's like, oh, this is like that one. We want everyone to feel unique. And I think CIG, as they're expanding into the first new starter system, where they have six planets to work with and, and more moons, mm. to really start expanding the, their palette and the, the new... Uh, studio in Montreal, they've added so many people there, bringing all this this new environmental talent as we've been talking about. They're going to be able to bring more different and varied creative perspectives to what alien worlds really look like. Because I want to see like really really alien stuff. And they said, okay, well, Pyro Six, this is our attempt at like something really alien with these really like massive super uh, super rock structures. Uh, I, I thought I thought it was great. Nice, nice. I think my favorite scenes were the like the massive, it almost well not planet size crater, but just that crater that you could see from so far away on that on that mm -hmm. planet was amazing. And yeah. then this the water like like Griffin said the liquid tech is. I think with the rivers and everything, they've just gotten so good at the transition from water to land. It looks so real and. Um, Whatever that was, was that the moss that was floating on it too? Just the up at the motion of the the anything in the water with it was amazing. So it's it's just such a real feel to it that it's incredible, and I, I just look forward to being in those environments. But yes, it would be wonderful that 
if something could pop out and scare me once in a while while we're there. So <laughs> once we get fauna, it's going to change everything so much. Yeah. 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 I, I, I thought the, uh, um, that pyro seeing it, we, we had seen little glimpses, you know, of, of different parts of pyro. They'd been showing them throughout the year. Uh, but I still had that pervasive feeling of pyro being relatively lifeless and all the planets being, you know, somewhat dead and uninteresting and to see them all put together uh in their in their final form or their latest latest iteration um they look just absolutely fantastic and diverse and and beautiful each in their own way um the one thing that i find so interesting is um i I have a a history with geology in the mining sector and for me i want to know how those formations formed so when I see, you know, rock spires with like a plate rock balanced on top, I'm like, how did that happen? So I hope, I hope, you know, and these spikes coming out each and every way, uh, like you'd expect to see on, uh, uh, you know, on Krypton. I, I'm just curious to find out uh, how they came to be, if that's going to be something in the lore or if it's just purely design, uh, you know, mystique. Uh, another thing to note that, too. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, you're... Guess first. Go ahead. Uh, well, I was about to say another thing to note too is that Pyro One and maybe Pyro Two are going to be really beat by the sun, so it's going to be extremely hazardous to be there, especially with and, like uh, the radiation and such. And and they said they're still working on the lava tech, so that's something they can always add in later, it's like with everything else. And just plug it into the, into the planet builder, and it's like, bam! There's a bunch of lava. All right, ready to move on to the next Just panel? Just the lighting effects of the, like, the shale-like surface of that one planet, too. I can't remember which one it was. Obsidian. That's just so cool. Yeah. yeah. It, it looked I, like I, it was glassed, you know? I, I, I will say that I, I was a little disappointed that we didn't get to see the, the, the skyscape from Pyro 4, which is orbiting Pyro 5, which is a gas giant like Crusader. Mm-hmm. So it's a, it's a binary planet. I've been talking about this for, for years, that... This is what I'm super excited about because there's six moons that are orbiting that binary planet system. So if you think about how amazing it looks from yellow with Crusader in the sky, right. add six moons. Yeah, so they, they just a, a they just featured the planets. They didn't really feature the system at all. My, my cat I, is, I, is in I a bit of a... Save, I think they're saving it for a big wow in the future. This was morning. <laughs> She's had a hard time, guys. She had a. Uh, I'll let she, that go. <laughs> she had a cat Something. outside, uh, and she wasn't happy with this cat outside, so she was meowing and meowing and meowing. So there you go. A little bit of love, okay. Oh man, uh, so uh, love. Uh, Com- Com- Comandante Galaxia says that uh, she was uh, that don't want to assume gender. Uh, I, I was at the, the Citizen Spain bar uh, bar citizen this weekend, and now I have the flu. Like oh. half the attendees, uh, very very sorry to hear that. Um, yeah, it's always a worry when you're around a, a whole bunch of people. Um, that's a, they they can't sleep, and this podcast is helping me get through it. Even um, I can't usually watch it live because we're in a terrible time zone for the EU. Some folks wake up in the middle of the night. Glad that uh, glad, glad that you can catch us. Sorry yeah. you're feeling bad. Ho- hopefully, hope you feel better. Yeah. Um, and yeah, Stim, Stim, we have to make a commitment to get our show on the on the export of YouTube because a lot of people want to watch that. Okay. Uh, at at, at other hours so let's let's make commitment sure. um yeah thursdays connect export okay yeah let's do it let's do it um okay you ready to dive into the next segment yes all right so the first one of course was about um about the different planets the next one mission my show notes was new right. mission types yeah and i think i missed most of this one um mid-afternoon i was getting some wife aggro uh it, anybody really key in on some things here on, on this one that wants to talk about it is this the new mission types no this is the <laughs> this is the engineering yeah engineering gameplay oh, did i did i did i make the wrong one yeah wrong one guys yeah sorry um uh, nope um you did it's my mistake whatever it was here we go Uh, yeah, I, I, Griff, I can uh, send anybody like really key on uh, stuff in this because like, I, I, I hate to say I kind of missed this one. Yeah, Iconia, you want to go first on this one or Ari? Yeah. Um, mine's quick. Um, it just made me think of uh, 
has the name of the character in the expanse is escaping me right now but the detective character oh yeah that the show is centered around in the beginning um just made me think that they're tra that they're making missions with that kind of Columbo. you know you're a private eye going right. yes yeah going around and solving things it's, it's a cool idea i like it so my my gathering i'm sorry yeah it's not necessarily what i pre prefer to do as far as um missions but I'll, I'll of course check it out and try it um, but it, it depends what it's like i guess in reality go ahead go ahead Iconia. um so my gathering was if you've been around for a while you've done the the very one of the very few missions it's called the uh the gundo hub where you're the lady contacts you and you're the private eye she's going to be with the that's insurance uh awesome. company and uh you know there's like several different outcomes for that and I believe they said they want this to be a much more longer lasting expanded type of that. Yeah, I, I, I think all of us that have been around from beginning with the, the early Tiss of Bannister and the Covalix missions, yeah, yeah, the, yeah. those really kind of open up the imagination of a, a story driven investigation and searching for clues. And uh, I, it, like, very much like I said with the, the detective from, uh, from, from the Expanse, yeah. that uh, it really creates a lot more. Uh, uh, depth and interest. So, and so some some of the notes. So I, I got some notes from the R Star Citizen uh, Discord. Sure. They do a great job of making before, clip notes. Before you jump into that, oh, I, so, I, I just I just want to add mine real quick. Um, what I loved was the ability to decide that you were done with the mission. So it's it you know kind of like in Skyrim, you know, where we've got you've got side quests. This one, from a story arc perspective, is you can feel there's a sense of accomplishment and a sense of of uh, com completedness as you go through the mission. Um, and they were talking about how, uh, you know, you can feel like you're done or you can abandon it at any point and you're not necessarily abandoning the whole mission, but there may still be, uh, you know, some more to it. Uh, for, for me, in a way that makes my skin itch because I, I could spend an extra like five hours trying to find if there was something else because I think there might be something that I'm still missing. But I, I still like the idea that you can... Um, uh, you know, if you don't have that clear itis like I do, uh, you can do as much of you want as you want of that session and then go away. And then perhaps if you're able to take it again later, um, and you learn that there's more to it, or you, or you find another clue, you might be able to repeat that mission, that mission and continue the rest of that. So I think that'll be pretty cool. I think it'll be important to, um, protect yourself from spoilers on these missions in particular, like you know because i watch a lot of star citizen streamers while i'm working and and whatever but um i i wouldn't want to have have the outcome ruined for me and and i, and I don't want to go look up on youtube oh how do i find everything about this mission mm. then it would be fun to to be have that sense of discovery yourself absolutely they they're it's worthwhile time but if it's just a thing, oh, run over here, turn that corner, there's the clue right there, and, and you already know it all, then I just wonder about the repeat gameplay of that for these missions in particular. That That's my only critique, yeah, yeah. I guess, and I just wonder how they're going to pull it off so it's fun to do multiple times. Well, this is a continuation of the Kovalex mission. That, that was where the roots of this started, and I think they even referenced it. When you do the Kovalex insurance mission now, those I, don't, I haven't done it recently, but back in the day, you could do it up to a certain point. And if you went in and turned it in, you got a certain amount of money. But if you continued, you'd find out that there was more to that mission oh, that you didn't finish. So this is an expansion of something that's been in the game for quite a while. So it is something to look forward to. Uh, Maiden, I agree with you 100%. Just how do they keep these fresh, right? Because once you've done Covalex right. and maxed it out, it's like, okay, I've done it. I know how to do it. And it's fun to do, even to go back to do once in a while. But, yeah, they, they're going to have to. And that, and that may just have to be a proactive thing that they do, that they change up the missions well, from time to time so that we well, don't I, get bored. Well, actually, Griffin, um, they, 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 they did talk about this at one or, one or two different points. So the, the, the intent is to build these as... Uh, elements of these types of, of, of mission types. Right. And then they're, they're going to be essentially procedurally generated uh, as part of the quanta system. So they'll be able to choose like random elements of different things and, and procedurally stip them, stitch them together so that, like I was worried about, that it, they're not always going to be the same or there'll be different variations and they're not going to have to hand 
create every one of these. And that's that's been the biggest bottleneck to adding more of these is that hand creating these is tremendously time intensive. And people have been asking, well, why don't why doesn't CIG do it? add more of those kinds of missions in? Why don't we get more of of, of um, uh, who's the mission giver um, over there at Grim Hex? Um, or is it Levski? But but it, any of these types of missions, it, it's because no, 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 key. You mean Kovalex? Yeah. Uh, but well, no, that 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 the other the other guy that sits at the bar that gives you the mission and you oh oh oh, oh. Back, um, things in the back. Um, yeah, he's he's now he moved they moved him out of uh, Levski. Yeah, but we know what you're talking about. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so they're not going to put these in until they get it working in the system because any of this intermittent handcrafting of these things is it's. I hate to say a waste of time, but then Mufasa in saying sense, Miles Eckert. Yes, Miles Eckert. That's what I was trying to. Think of. Mm-hmm. Not, not as cool as the Kovalex mission, but still kind of one of those things where you do things, you go back and come back, and and uh, kind of builds on on elements of, mm-hmm. of previous phases of it. All right, so moving on uh, to power play. Power play, yeah. So this is super exciting. Who, who's who's super excited to be Scotty aboard? A big ship. I, oh yeah, I, I love how he said, you know, Scotty actually wouldn't be the one sitting beside, you know, at, at the <laughs> transporter, <laughs> running around and be the one, you know, <laughs> minding the dilithium chamber, etc. But yeah, this is this is awesome. This really defined for me what engineering gameplay is going to be like, um, you know. Uh, and I think they were saying it's another part as well. It's not just engineering is the role. There's another part of this role. I can't remember what the name is. If anybody remembers. Yeah. Damage control. Damage control, yeah. So yes. this part here, uh, if you're familiar with what's going on, it's a hammerhead. And what they're showing is the power management component that's going on. And they talk about how there's, uh, you know, you, you can uh, interrupt part of the uh, of the power that's routing through. And it may not be a, a different, a real problem because power might be able to get around, around another way, but it may be weaker. But if you cut, you know, the complete power off, then that's got to be solved. You've got to solve that power or things like, you know, when we start getting into rooms like this, you've got, uh, 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 atmosphere, atmosphere. Yeah. Thank you. I was, oh, what's the word for it? Life, not life control. Life, uh, life, life support. support. Thank you. Uh, life support, you know, failing or gravity failing or what have you. And so you've really got to manage all these systems. Um, and it kind of gave that systemic gameplay a real meaning. And the fact that we got to see fire, that you know is acting both with gravity and without gravity. <laughs> That's cool. With, anyway, with, with yeah. atmosphere, without atmosphere. Yeah, yeah. I I, well. I may have missed this during the discussion. I don't think they said anything about this though. With this, once this does go in, do you think they're going to finally limit the amount of oxygen you have in your in your yes. normal everyday suit? They are okay. Because then it makes more sense. Because otherwise, you just keep your helmet on all the time when you're on your ship, and all this doesn't matter as much. But once, yeah, because I know they've had that ability to have the oxygen start to get low, um, and and and, and a, a limited number of people will be able to be on at different kinds of ships. So you won't be able to have twenty people piled into a cutlass without uh, just using the ships, the ship's life support, because it'll be overloaded. And we've spoken about that on the show many times about how, you know, it's going to be limited on how many, how many people. So it's nice to actually see that validated in game or in, in presentation. Yep. So the best way to fight a fire and is to... Kiss Divine it... Shadow actually answered what I was talking about. The, this, the, your suit kind of auto, does it auto replenish when you're in yes, an yes. oxygenated yeah, environment? That. Okay. Yeah, it does that now. All right. That that was the thing. I guess I I didn't realize that's an intent intended to stay oh, that way. Oh, here, here they're showing the number of people in the room. Okay, so I, yeah. I didn't get to see all all yeah. those pan, all the panel. And then you see I, them I, all I, fall I, down dead at the same time. I hope I hope that yeah. it takes time. You know, like I I hope it's not instantly you 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 choke and die. I hope that you know you get tired and as the oxygen in the room starts depleting. You know, well I, uh, it 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 depends on how much more draw there is and how much is available. And yeah, they, yeah. If, I mean, if it, you massively overload it, then it'll it, happen. If it's fairly instantly quick. sucked out of the room, yes. But if if the um, if the oxygen is just no longer replenishing, and there's oxygen in there, and as you breathe it, it depletes. It would be nice. To, I don't know. That was a you know almost every star uh, sci-fi uh, 
uh, whether it was whether it was Star Trek or you know um, Star Wars or anything, they, they've all had this situation where you're running out. Actually, maybe Star Wars hasn't. Or well, you're running well, out. Even, of even, well, even in modern day on Earth, if you're in a cave that collapsed, you're in a trapped in a, 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 a vault or, or something yeah. like that. You, you have so much oxygen, that, you know, it slowly, slowly. But but that that comes back to what what is the oxygen draw versus how much is replenished. And if so, if you have a couple of people in a room with a certain amount of oxygen and it's not getting replenished, replenished, then it's going to happen slower. But if you have 20 people in a room, that's going to happen much faster. Yeah. They were working on fire extinguishers as well. Maybe that could do yeah. something to the uh, fire, putting it out quicker yeah. instead of venting the whole room and wasting all that O2. Yep. 100%. Yeah. Definitely. Definitely. Very cool stuff coming. Very cool stuff. All right, next one. Are we moving on to underground facilities? Yeah. All right. This is what I was super excited to see. Oh, why? Why so? Uh, I was looking forward to this because I, I, I love the caves. I love the underground bunkers. Combining both of these and expanding them. Hey, look at that. Hey, these things are going to be so cool. Huge. So massive. Yeah. And you'll be able to spend hours exploring these things. And just in, any one of these could add hours of gameplay. And then think about an invest, a, a, a long, complicated investigation mission and having to fight through enemies, NPCs. And yeah, the, the thought they're putting into, like, choke points and things like that that are going to be difficult to get through is... That's awesome. That's going to be... Because right and, now, the you know, the bunker missions are fun and you can get some loot and stuff, but they're so one-dimensional. You know, you go down there and it's kind of the same thing every time, but it's going to be so much better. Yeah, and, and having those ways where you can sneak around to do stealth, stealth gameplay and, like, go through the air vents or go underneath and, or up on catwalks and things like that. Will you be able to drive Steve through there? I would assume people are going to try. Like portions of it, I would think. <laughs> and how cool would it be if your, your co-pilot could hold the gun and you're driving Steve? <laughs> Blapping blap fools. What, one day? Go, Mab, thanks for the sub. They need the uh, they need to have the uh, window fold forward like it does in the old Jeeps. Oh, yeah. <laughs> old Wheelie's that'd, Jeeps. That'd yeah. be fun. Yeah. Giving me the MASH vibes, everybody. Yeah, that that was that was a panel I was really looking forward to. I'm glad that glad glad they look as good or better. Ari, any comments on that one? Um, I just other than what I already said. Okay. <laughs> nothing, okay. On, nothing other than that. Perfect. Sorry, I was focusing on chat a little bit there. I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> now, I would say it would be nice if the places were like, especially like the basements were like infected with stuff. Or you have yeah, to swim through water, or if it's uh, electrified. So he just said Umbrella Corporation. <laughs> All right. And the more they can make it feel like a bomb mission, like you're, like you're trying to get yeah. in somewhere. Yeah, for sure. That's going to be cool. So the new master modes, the need for speed, and all that kind of stuff. Oh, this What's is the, the big topic. What, what do you all think about this? There, there's a lot of different views on a lot of different things. I think it's needed. I think it's very, very, very much needed. Um, uh, I think why don't we why don't we have uh, Iconia, our, our guest, go first though on on thoughts and go ahead, Iconia. On which part the uh, the master mode? Yeah, the the, the speeds. Yeah, speed changes. Yeah. So here here's my thing. I remember when they introduced hover mode, and it was a thing, and I could never get the terrapin to actually hover. And I don't know, this is, um, I do know that they're probably going to start playing with a whole lot more stuff and where the guinea pigs and I don't mind playing with it. It sounds, it sounds kind of fun on paper. Uh, I'm looking yeah. forward to it. Nice. And um, I mean, they were saying that your, your shields gradually go down as you spool up your quantum drive. I mean, that's something that they were talking that about for quite a bit. Yeah, I, it, and that's probably the biggest controversy in the community. That it was, it 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 seemed very drastic. That okay, well, if you want a quantum, you have to drop your shields. Well, what if you're under attack, and 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 then what if you get someplace and there's a bunch of enemies there and you have no shields and it takes five minutes to spin your shields up, 
Um, it's probably not I, five minutes though, Jordan. It's, it, it's probably uh, big ships. It takes like, uh, several ah, minutes. Okay. Yeah, like well, ninety. Did, like, uh, uh, did you did you see the post that they put out about to clarify how that works? Did you guys see it? No, no. I did not. There oh, is a post. Okay. Let me find the link for it. But basically, what they said is this. I think you were just mentioning Iconia. When you get ready to go into quantum, as you are spooling up, your power and shields is spooling down. It's not instantaneous. So there's, it's basically yes, yes. this double thing, right? But they also say that there's a reserve of your shields that is also held in place during that time. So I guess basically, is if you're getting hit, your shields are going down, but they're just not recharging, and that and that remains with you through quantum. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like put into like a buffer. Mm -hmm. I'll find the link for you guys, and because we talked about it on Sunday, and yeah, um, I, I I assume that they would they would address that because the community is just yeah they did it that day they literally did within 24 hours they they, they yeah. said that there wasn't enough detail in the presentation so they they spread it out so I'll try to get it for you guys yeah it's, and, and, I was go, gonna go say ahead. it's it's one of those things where um you know anything when it comes to combat whether it's a, a flight a change to the flight mechanic or what have you they do need to have the details on on this i think that's something that cig is kind of going still through that bit of learning curve is their community is hypersensitive to changes in combat and flight mechanics because it changes the way their favorite ship is you know it changes um you know it, they worry that so, so you run into an issue joran right where you get you get called that that white knight if you defend CIG and say, trust the process, right? Um, you know, because people will come through and say, I don't trust CIG because I've been burned by them before in the way that the model worked, you know, whether it's hover mode or whatever the story is, where, you know, it's this, it's this evaluative evolving process where you go through and yes, there are some mistakes that go through, but also there does have to be a little bit of faith, okay? And there needs to be a voice to say that, you know, uh, we like it or we don't like it because CIG is very good, very good at taking the um, uh, the good out of even negative feedback. So even negative feedback is valuable for CIG, not as constructive, but they're able to do it. But what I'm trying to get to there is sometimes there just needs to be a little bit of faith that there's um, that there is stuff going through uh, that, that eventually they're going to figure it out. But I, I like with that feedback that CIG has come through within 24 hours and posted a, uh, an update to really clarify things for the community. That's great. And that's why I don't mind being called a white knight because it's eventually going to happen, but the community is yeah, also well, welcome and, and encouraged and to give that feedback. A white knight, Stim, and like I always say, I'm a beige knight. Uh, I, I believe in the process. Like, like you say, that they're going to try new things and see what works, what doesn't work. Uh, we got some great, I, Iconia has a, a tremendous point there, and that's exactly the one that, that I've been making this whole time uh, since this happened. Uh, the, the whole hover mode thing is that, okay, so Dave Colson, uh, he came out and he was super excited about it. It's like, I, I put so much work into this, and this is going to be great. It's the greatest thing ever, you know, this is what we're, we're, we're going to be going with now. Um, and that lasted one patch and then gone. But at the same time, they took elements of that that we have, and the flight model, I, a couple of patches later, the flight model improved tremendously. And, and that's what's great about this process of trying things. And, and I was listening, I don't know who the streamer was that I was listening to. Um, I think it was on a Space Tomato talk. Um, I, I think it was Enterprise. Uh, on a, a recent Space Tomato, he had a round table on, and he was talking about that, like, there isn't any other game that provides the same feel of six degrees of freedom in space combat that Star Citizen does. I, there, there's nothing else out there that's ever been done in this way, and so th th they don't have any anything to really follow. And the, the breadth of different sizes of ships and 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 how they how they fly um it, it's it's very new ground and they're having to experiment and try new things and the fact that they get to get this feedback from the community that's so involved and yeah and a lot of them are very negative but at the same time you do kind of gauge that okay well it's like we're gonna do this and it's like all of a sudden it's like it's just like all right something's not right about this we need to make some changes or it's like oh we love this and it's like oh okay well we're gonna keep more of this, less of this, 
and that's kind of how I, this whole process works. That um, might, might I, I can also add that, I mean, even when the capacitors came in, um, that was a difficult adjustment period. Um, the uh, the power triangle, that yeah, was a difficult adjustment that. period. Um, but they they balanced it. I mean, they just implemented it and you know kind of left it to us. But they balanced it, and as far as I'm aware of, it's and now you have like super powerful weapons, but not powerful shields or or reserve thrust. You know, Starlet redeemed. All hosts need to take a drink. So cheers. Ah, to Starlet. Cheers. Iterative process. We will get there. It is going to be a long Good road. Good to see you, Starlet. Missed you at uh, at Equinox. Obviously, it'll be a long way to travel for you, but it's great to see the rest of the team. And I, of course, um, enjoy occasionally dogfighting and um, that aspect of things. I, I don't really consider myself a pirate, but I, I, I like... And I don't consider myself a, a particularly good player versus player dogfighter, but I, I do the best I can. I can probably hold my own a little better than other people in the game that are noobs at it. But um, when it comes to trying to have a space battle that gives you sort of the arena commander feel that we, we kind of had early on in this whole process, before the game was, before the PU was ever, ever, ever even existed, we were able to fly around and have some pretty good space combat, you know, against NPCs. And so that was always kind of my anticipation for this game, that that was going to always be a constant and a good thing and and satisfying gameplay. And the zooming that it is now and the um, just, it, it, it doesn't feel like a furball. Because a furball is more of like a sphere. You know, you're constantly turning and... Uh, maneuvering with your power management and trying to gain an advantage over somebody and um i mean people say top gun isn't realistic because the battle would be over with missile shots from yeah. miles away and you know yeah. all that stuff but I, I, I but this it. is the game this, this is what makes it fun and so i look forward to what they're going to do and i really hope um yeah as they tweak it and as they make adjustments it's going to deliver I, I think it will oh. so i have faith in them yeah. We we have a poll running best night shade platinum white beige black or Michael. <laughs> 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 um, yeah, and so so that's uh, also an interesting um, an interesting take. Because... Michael's an instant winner. <laughs> yes, <laughs> Michael Knight. Um, so I, I I've been listening to some of the 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 the, the top tier dogfighters and. Most of them don't do the, the jousting. That they are all doing the maneuvering, and it's typically the people that are less skilled at the really high-level PvP dogfighting that are doing the boom and zoom um, uh, jousting that they're, that cg has been trying to get away from. Uh, and I think that was one of the things that was the the I've taken away from the community's feedback about what they said in this in this segment was that they're giving up on trying to artificially force spaceships to be slow World War One bike lanes because it's just not realistic. And the most of the of the, the dogfighters have said that what they're what they talked about and showed in this presentation, they're really happy about. So I I, I don't do much dogfighting, um, but I mean, once in a while I do like to do a little PVE. Uh, Used to do a lot of Vandal Swarm and I do some bounty hunting, but I, I'm really looking forward to uh, to them moving into what hopefully is the final stage to iterate on of the of the flight model. But we'll see. I I, I expect that everything's going to change over the next two years because we have the the ship components, component balancing, weapon balancing. I'm nothing is balanced right now at all. Uh, she, uh, yeah. uh, armor and physical damage and ships not blowing up right away all that's going to change how everything interacts and then they have to balance between the light fighters the medium fighters the heavy fighters the bombers the medium ships the capital ships it's going to be a tremendously and just mind-bogglingly complicated balance one thing that i really hope it gets back to as well is uh being able to use urkel that that web tool to balance your ship and figure out 
which components are going to give you what you want on it because it used there was a period of time where that was a great tool and it was a lot more accurate and then of course they changed to capacitors and everything else and it totally threw all that off and and, um, and there's no there was difference. that window where it going to urkel and trying to tweak my ship was i was doing i was spending more time on urkel than i was in the game playing <laughs> so it was so much fun to do that and i missed that yeah a, and a lot of people alex uh the druge Drew's great, great game if we're thinking about the same uh, Star Control game. Um, I wonder if they'll change uh, Arena Commander uh, in terms of time to kill. Um, you know, I mean, just even talking about time to kill, that, that is just, you know, take take that component of, of when we look at all of the, when we look at all of what was presented and um, actually, you know, I had a, had a conversation with Execute uh, kind of offline and we were talking about how uh, I, I had this theory that people would really start to understand the value uh, in combat of the military ships, you know, and even Origin that's kind of tanky in that way, um, you know, saying that, you know, maybe the components, et cetera, wouldn't, you wouldn't be able to have as good components in, in Drake ships. And it turned out it started off that way, but they quickly re rescinded that and made it so that Drake ships could have all, all components. Uh, and execute was uh, was able to correct me and say, you know what? But think about the shields, and they 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 don't have a lot of shields, Drake, and they have more um, they have less armor as well. So those components are going to get hit sooner. And so when we're looking at things like fuses in the in the in the system and the components getting hit, that's going to be the downside to flying a less expensive ship that you can afford earlier in the game as you sort of progress through is, you know, and, and, you know, honestly, like Drake for life, a lot of people love, love Drake. I'm more uh, of a different manufacturer, uh, you know, just by what I love. But, you know, I think a lot of Drake owners are going to say, you know what? I love my Drake. I really like flying it, but I really, when I need to go out and, and uh, I'm not being a, I'm not being a pirate and I don't need that, that more derp and sacrifice the, the, the armor side of it, um, that they're going to want to be in a ship that, that, uh, doesn't have a, a big D on the side of it. That came out wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I'm okay. not going to argue with you. <laughs> Moving on. Uh, and I, I'm sure in chat, you've got a lot of, a, a lot to say about that, but, uh, let's, let's move there, on to the next there section. Has been. Okay. I, I am, I, I was so looking forward to this. I am, what did everybody think? Lorgold 2.0. So this, this was my favorite. This is what I was looking forward towards. Um, cause being mostly from the beginning, I remember when Hurston first came out and landing on Lorville and having tons of fun there and, uh, seeing it change to something a lot more high fidelity yeah. is, is pretty good. You know, yep. it looks like there's more places to land, like, um, little landing pads on top of, uh, different buildings yeah, that are out there be as well. Like Mike Jack, they said, so they're not going to have the no fly zone over the whole city, which has always been so, so annoying. So it came out in the beginning of 2019 because they they, they they demoed they demoed this in, in Austin in 2018. So we got a 2019, 20, 21, 22. So three years later, they're going back, redoing it. I think it looks absolutely gorgeous. Um, it, Shadow says that it's his, his, his main home. A lot of people make Lorville their home. Uh, I I don't really like Lorville. It's kind of, kind of grungy, but I am super happy with the way it's looking in the in the redo so i will probably uh, visit there much more often now i like it i like that um that one shot of the final where it goes from the old version of lorville to the new version and you know some of you guys have played with uh levski and i'm so excited to see the new levski when they implement that you yeah. know from what they did with lorville and hurston it, they're just getting it's so, be so awesome. awesome all all the time with with their with their they're learning how to build worlds and i don't think any uh, who else has really built worlds like this uh, well remember or, origin uh back in the day the the uh the subtitle or the the byline for origin as a manufacturer was we build worlds you know, and that was the company that yeah. released uh, Wing Commander. Alex Vir says Ultimate builds worlds. Is that theirs as well? Well, 
you know, I, I, I believe Chris Roberts was involved in Ultima as well. <laughs> so there we go. There we go. Um, all right. So moving on, um, Jordan, tell us a little bit about this slide here. Uh, so this is resource management. So this is what we're getting in the first iteration of resource management when they do release it. Uh, this is the interactables and accessible items on the ships. I guess those panels, the relays, changing the fuses on the relays, balancing resources, uh, defining control groups um, to the MFDs. So we'll get that engineering, uh, 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 what do they call it? We've got missile mode, non-missile mode, engineering mode, power mode, it, the, the power management uh, right. uh, MFDs, which you don't have access to. Uh, allowing uh, people to create uh, presets in the resource resource network. So you may have a combat preset. You may have a fast travel preset. So that will be what we'll see the first time around. I believe somebody redeemed uh, all host take a drink. Oh. <laughs> I think he's want to have more of that moonshine. Uh, we also Cheers. had a fidelity yes, that's right, call out <laughs> earlier. So <laughs> Cheers, everyone. Cheers, everyone. Wait, somebody said fidelity? Yes. Bobby. Yes, you did. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, that's right. That's, I, I'm, the stuff's, the think... stuff's working. I'm playing the private eye, the detective, and I'm working my way through the mission. <laughs> I'm sure there's more to come. <laughs> I'm sure I'm guilty. I want to thank Black Manx in chat because they said, um, they corrected Stim that it's We Create Worlds. That was the Origins okay. thing back, back in the day. Is, I, is and... that what I said? Did I not say that? You said different? we build worlds, oh, and, and I and okay. it kind of rubbed me the wrong way. And I was going to say something, but I know we're trying to start going faster here. No, so. no, thank, thank you, thank you. It, you know, taglines do matter the the way it's done. But yeah. And Rocket Off Redeem chat needs to take a drink, and we generally drink with chat. So yes. cheers, chat. Cheers, chat. Cheers, Rocket. You have to get another one. Holy cow! <laughs> the most entertaining person in concierge. All right. So this last. Uh, part here for two. Hot Topic 2. Yeah, the course air. I am so angry at this. Okay. <laughs> Why? Okay. I can't what? wait for it. <laughs> this this is Ari's turn to favorite smiles. ship, Joran. So, it, tread lightly. It looks so good. It it's, looks are, so good. Are you saying it I can't possibly to... be Drake? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm no, I'm saying it, it. It looks so good on the outside, and it's just I, I, I want this ship. And then I look at the inside, and I just can't. I just, I just, I, I cannot. So live in a ship with that interior. I just, look I, at the I, love I, for I it in chat. You've got Grim saying, "There it is, my ship." You've got no, uh, his no, divine shadow it's, it's throwing out ship. the caps. Uh, Pramster, it's, it's Corsair awesome. is awesome. You know, it's. No, it, it, Oh, it, this is an amazing ship. I mean, it's it's. It, I think it's going to be one one of the best ships in the, in, in the verse in it, in its size class. I mean, it's absolutely fantastic. I just I, I I am so aesthetically driven that I just I I I can't own this for myself. But I I, I am so envious of the people that are going to own this that that like that because the exterior. I just I love how starship how how Star Wars this ship looks. And, and it almost say, looks Drake. I'm waiting for the I videos mean, of people flying it on its side to the Imperial March because it yeah. looks so much like an Imperial <laughs> shuttle. Yeah. It, and it almost looks more misc on the outside. It does a little bit, yeah. Yeah. It doesn't it doesn't look I, like a Drake I ship. I made to that me. mistake early on. I, I called it a misc ship back during the concept. Yeah. I for one can't wait to put holes in it and blow them all up. <laughs> <laughs> and give the vulture something to do. Yeah, it's um, it, it's it's an absolutely fantastic stuff. I I think this this is a real winner for for CIG. I just it, I I'm just upset that I I my aesthetic uh, 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 prejudices and uh, and and, and, and uh, <laughs> you'll get over it. it you'll get over issues. it. You have I, I think when yeah, Pyro have... comes out too, it's it's a really good like mid range ship to get to to use for Pyro, yeah. don't you think? because yeah. you don't need the massive multi-crew ships. This this could do the job and get it's you there. The, and... It's the perfect ship for Pyro. 
you know yeah, it, it's... I, I will enjoy being in, in all of my friendships i shadow i'll love flying with you in, in in your corsair all of my friends that own the corsair uh i i'll, I'll love being with y'all in it i just i i just i can't own it can't. It, it's because it's drake that that interior i mean this interior i i well can't. that's that's drake interior it doesn't have a drake yeah. exterior but it has a drake interior so you're 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 definitely uh anti-drake that's what i hear it's just not for me. I like. It's I not think like it's... we won't clean the toilets on them, Jaron. <laughs> no, it's, it's not that they're not not clean. It's it's not that they're. It's I, I I love I I I love the the visual detailing. I love the I how much detail that there is in it. Visual interest and complexity to the interiors. I I think it's great design. It's it's just it's a different future that I from the one that I want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Me, me, me too. It's it's got that. Um... It's got that matrix, you know, in the future kind of look where, you know, things are, things are jacked together uh, to make it work, which is, which is or, a very, know, like very cool future, or, but yeah. yeah or, or even, even, I, I don't know, it's, I'm not like, even necessarily Star Wars because a lot of those interiors were, were a little more polished than, than Drake is, but th those, those used futures, you know, that it's kind of dark and dingy and, you know, it's like you, you got to uh, work to keep your ship rolling. Whereas I dream of that Star that Star Trek, a brighter, more positive. Yeah, you know, like I'd say Apple. I'm not an Apple person, but I I love design. I I'm in the interior design industry. I, I've been in, in luxury interior design for 30 years, and I just I like so clean, what? good design. Doran, the... if, if if they took this this ship and they put on those typical crusader engines you know those those two kind of ovals and then inside give it a round uh you know uh doorway between different things it would easily be converted into a crusader ship oh and you have to slather it full of crusader logos i mean that's that's a given but oh just 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 put panels over everything so it's everything's not exposed just put panels just put panels that's all i, want. I, I just need interior panels so it's just not all exposed you know struts and frames and pipes and, and ducting and all that sort of stuff. So, like, it looks great. I just, I don't like the, it. I was going to say, the question I had is, will it fit on the Kraken pad? And can we blow that up too? Probably on the, on the larger pad. <laughs> uh, Roy McAvoy says get some drywall. Gone. I think that looks dumb on the console. But Sorry, which one? Cindy, Cindy, that's Cindy. an option. Oh, the there fan? are people who've been wanting yeah. the fans back for years, believe it or not. <laughs> and fuzzy dice. And I remember the original Cutlass Adam and, and swag on your, on you know whatever you want to do, but I want it to be an option where you can remove it because something like a spinning fan there constantly is going to bug the heck out of me. So. At least be able to turn it off so it's not spinning. There you go, I guess. But still, can't you just attach it? So I don't know. Yeah. Um. What do you think of the let's let's talk about it really briefly because I don't think we have it as a discussion point later on, the um, the ship that is being voted on right now, uh, in terms of what the um, oh the media mining ship yeah yeah on on what manufacturer what, it's going to be yeah RSI yeah I mean it, RSI is winning uh, hands down but what do you guys think about that I agree. Yeah, I voted RSI. Um, I thought about MISC for a hot second, um, and Argo. Argo was probably my second because of their utility aspects, but the mole. But um, for that middle ground ship, I felt like it would be great because I just thought it would be just a, a, the sister ship to the bigger one to me was the way to go with that. So I'd be yep. curious to see what RSI does with it. Yeah, I mean, I feel the same way. I voted Argo because I felt like maybe they could take the mole, slap on two more turrets on each side, and just let it go. I voted Misk because I'm hoping that by working on a Misk ship, they're going to finally do the refit of the Freelancer and get some of that stuff done by, <laughs> as well, because they'll have more assets to work with. So. That, was, that was the argument um, that people had for um it wasn't misc who was it i was hoping it was missed because we already have the uh the prospector right it'd be nice to have something mm -hmm. that's kind of in the middle um i was talking to and i don't know if i should disclose his opinion but 
Execute was saying that, um, remember the original pictures where the, the prospector had the mining laser pointing straight down, mining like a drill, right? Drilling into the ground. Uh, well, he's apparently... completely open. He's, he's completely open about that about that opinion. I okay, he's, awesome. He's landed. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, I think all of us want that. Yeah, yeah, and, and so uh, he was saying it with conversations that he had with with um, CIG. I don't know if it was John Crew or who it was, uh, but they were confirming. And of course, this is hearsay coming from me. Uh, but he said that they were confirming that that mining, that sort of drilling, is going to be a thing in the future. And so uh, the speculation. That, that he has, the number of members of the community have, is that it's going to be uh, a ship that is specific for landing on the, on, on the ground and doing that kind of drilling mining, or at least have that as a, as a factor, because apparently the mole can't do that. Um, not that the prospector can do it now either, but... Um, I, don't, yeah. I don't know why the mole couldn't do that. They just angle the, the things down. I would think so, yeah. But, yeah, like... Yeah. It, it's 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 pretty much the same arm as the prospector. You just have two of them or three. Ooh, of them. Quinn said, "Give the spider miner." Remember the the Sidness? I think that's what it's called. Yep, the, the Sidness. I think miner. we've been the confirmed Sidness. that that's only a Squadron Forty Two asset, though, and it's not going to be a ship. So we, if you... we we don't know that that will never be released to the PU after Squadron Forty Two. They've never shown it since the early sneak peeks. Oh yes, um, they have. Oh yes, they have. Oh yes, they have. Oh, I really? have to tell you this. Go look oh, at that. We, we, but, this, this ver the, not the vertical, the vertical slice. No it's a drone. No. Take a look at the footage. The you know what footage that came out last week. I was a fly I, into the hangar and it's sitting in the hangar there. But CIG did not release that for us. I'm just saying that was their footage. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> no, no, a hundred percent. Because I, I was actually going to mention that. The, oh, okay. <laughs> the, 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 yeah, the, the the video that none of us saw. <laughs> right. Um, exactly. <laughs> I, I I I keyed on that right away. And it, it looked very much very much. Ah, uh, like my this. eyes. <laughs> <laughs> so would, you think this would be Argo? Uh, yeah. Drake? What? Which piece of equipment? More, more I go. The Sidness. Uh, Argo. Oh, the Sidness. Stepped on one of those about an hour ago. <laughs> the Argo Sidness Spider Man. Two hours ago. Yeah, that would make sense. Yeah. yeah. There's a Drake Crane vehicle in one of the pictures. Yeah. Shadow, si Shadow says that it's Great Cat. That's possible, also. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it could be. So, that that one in particular is a very much a, a Matrix. Um, like yeah uh feel to it just from the drones that were managing the bodies i guess or the the, yep. the human batteries yeah the flying spider spider drone things mm. quinn says it even says great cat on it oh, is it, it really yeah right above one of the claws ah. near the thruster yeah. oh it does there you go that's why smithy joe bob was saying enhance oh it does oh. right there <laughs> Sure does. Look at that. Everybody in chat was saying, "Great cat, great cat, great cat." Like, <laughs> that would be a Y. It says it right on it. <laughs> Hello, McFly. Nice, very, very nice. Good job. Yeah, good job, Jet. <laughs> Thank you. So much. <laughs> Keep, keeping us on Things point. Thanks for meeting for us. <laughs> but, but the best community anywhere. All right. We're too busy just talk, just talking and drinking here. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so after that, um, Crusader Spirit. Oh, that's right. Yeah, the yeah, the new, the new ships. Yeah. Very exciting. Let me turn off uh, dark mode there. Oh, sorry, so, everybody. So oh, T, I'm not showing so it to T, you. That's probably a good thing. There we go. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So T T needs to run a run, run a poll between what's everybody getting the A one C one E one. Mm -hmm. Or, or uh, number four on the poll is the unannounced future, hopefully, exploration version. CIG totally oh. missed the ball on giving us an exploration. They, and they also did, they it. did. But as soon as you put that as a voting option, everyone's just going to say the exploration version. Oh, well, sure. We'll put, we'll put it you as know, because, because we want more. <laughs> we want more options. <laughs> But, and, and interestingly, Mystic, uh, Mystic said that it should have exploration and science because we don't have any other science ships between the uh, the Reliant Sen and the Endeavor. 
There uh, are no other sign ships at all. Be nice to Moper requests that you put free booze next to the E1 in the lineup of voting choices. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Jordan. Uh, Oh, yeah, and wait, somebody else said uh, medical version. Starship Grimm says uh, there was a med medical version. That's that's a good a good point to compete with the Cutlass Red, because this is a Cutlass Freelancer competitor in that size class. So there they and are. It is so sexy. So sexy. Go back to the sexy pictures. It's a Crusader Freelancer. This is the C1. Where's <laughs> right. the... Oh, there we go. It is a beautiful I, ship, hey? It's sleek. It's super sleek. I, I like it. Yeah, I, I was kind of torn on the C1, but I I, ha I have zero need for a, a ship that has only 48 SCU on it. Look yep. at the, the, the tractor beam. That's that's cool. Yeah. We, we, need, we need that for Xenothreat. Right? Yeah. So there, there was an image somewhere where it has the turret on the top, and it looks like it has the same rail as the Scorpius, where it just flips around, and you, maybe you can shoot backwards. That would be the A1, but I don't know if it has the ability for it to flip around. Yeah, I, I don't think so. I think it's just, it's just the way the design is, where it looks like it's a track, but I, I, I don't think that it's going to have that. I think it's pretty much the same type of top turret as the uh, the Hercules and Mercury have. The big question is whether or not... Grab an A1, because the um, it's the only one, looking at the specs, that you can swap out the gimbals on the front and then have four forward firing size threes so that oh. that's pretty awesome oh yeah yeah that's significant it has one yeah. size two shield look at that look at those bombs yeah i think there's 10 size five bombs so that's gonna be pretty fun i i almost thought about the a1 too but i, I don't need it i know so many people that are buying it yeah yeah it's just remember, you know, there's, there's got to be value in buying some of the ships with in-game currency. If you buy all of the ships, then you have nothing to aspire to as you go through. But but so, there's there, there's there's also the benefit of you know like I'm in in the yacht club. We always talk about how this is probably one of the highest concentrations of fleets per single owners of. Oh yeah, pretty much anywhere anywhere in the community. Yeah, if you're in a community like the Yacht Club or or, probably or Jump Club Sigma and, and others, yeah, Jump, Jump Club, the, the the really crazy place, um, you're gonna know ten people that own A ones that are only ever gonna fly them every once in a while. It's like, hey, can I borrow your A one? Go go blow some stuff up. Yeah, as long as that is LTI, and I haven't gone crazy <laughs> with with upfittings. So could the bombs be replaced with drop pods? That is a big question the community has, right? Everybody really? wants yeah. to have those as drop pods, yeah. We as don't a, have drop pods yet. Like, we don't have anything nails. like that. Nails. Um, yeah, nails. Yeah, or, or instead of, um, you know, maybe Titan suits. Yeah, that'd be pretty cool. That'd be cool. Something we haven't heard think, in a while. I don't think they're big enough to fit Titan suits. Unless no. they fold up like the uh, Drake Dragonfly. Oh, so the E1, the E1 and the C1 tied with four. Uh, oh no, the and the A1 one with five, and so the one person bought two. I I know a bunch of people that bought all three. <laughs> yeah, all three, the whole pack. Yeah, tons of people did. It's just it's such a sexy ship, and well, for for 130, 150 bucks. Yeah, I think it was one seventy five oh, yeah, for the. Yeah, five people the bought A1? one of each. Bought all three. Eleventh, mm. they bought all three. So for the fast scrolls, yeah, one seventy-five. Uh, Non-war bond bond is one fifty-five. Yeah, Rocket Off said she missed another poll. I I missed it too. <laughs> oh, the poll totally missed it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I I only see it after it goes all green. Sorry, I mean, T. There should be like there should be like some kind of thing that like flashes it up there. Just, like, there is, we just didn't see it. <laughs> Jupiter, Jenny, look at stuff. Okay, ne the, next, okay, next topic, Keep yeah. Going. So, Grey it's Cat midnight. Steve. Let's talk about Grey Cat Steve. Yes. That's a beautiful thing. I, I really like how in the front, 
you know, you're putting in like a component. That's awesome. That's yeah, the first time I've actually, seen that okay. in vehicles. Mm-hmm. It's the first time they've actually done that. So they're, they're doing that for everything new that's coming out. Now that they have all the components uh, in every size physicalized, every new ship is coming out and vehicle is coming out with, with that capability. That's a and lot of work. The fact that it's got car- yeah. a lot of work. Yeah. Yeah. But very necessary work. I like how fast it is. I like that it has that bouncing buggy kind of feel to it with great suspension. That's, that's... I'm not happy that they nerfed the Cyclone to be slower than the Steve. Like, why? Like, okay, maybe 55 meters per second was a little too fast, but why make it slower? I'm pissed off. So what, what, is, the, what is Steve speed-wise? 40 meters per second. 40. Oh, and they... Wow, they nerfed it from 55 down to what, like 35? 35, yeah. Mm-hmm. For, for the racing version of the Cyclone, which should be faster wow. than a Jeep. But when you boost, it goes the same speed as what it did before. D- does it? For short I didn't periods. think that it got all the way up there. Right? Mm-hmm. Short periods. But but its, ba- it's base speed should be faster than a Jeep. It's, it's, the Cyclones were sold on speed, and the racing version... Should be should be fast, like, mm-hmm. even if it's forty five mm-hmm. meters per second. Damar's going to take so so much more longer. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Usually, although more people will finish. <laughs> <laughs> um, they didn't take. They didn't change the tank. It still goes thirty. <laughs> Drives like crap. <laughs> yeah. Okay. How. How quickly can we get through the Chris and Rich Tyler talk, uh, Jorin? Because there's not very quickly. Okay. That's that, that's why I was trying to push forward. Yeah, so fair, fair. We just you know sleep. This this, this is stuff like some that. of the important stuff. So, yeah. So, sorry, T. Sorry, anybody on the East Coast. Um, yeah, I, there's a lot of really cool stuff to cover on this. So this is the new FPS scanning and interaction. Um, I, I'm super excited for this because there's so many things to interact with in the universe and it's so hard to tell what, especially for newer players who are going into a new environment and I always wondered, like when we saw the vertical slice and they know, okay, well you go over here and you have to cut into this vent to get the battery to put in the generator to open the door and well, how do you know that? Like, how do you know that there's a vent that you can interact with and cut open? And they said, that, okay, well, this FPS scanning is how you tell if there's things that you can cut open and interact with and look inside of. It's like every other game has some kind of form of, of search. That seems a lot more intuitive to me than the existing inner thought system. I like that. You, you know, you don't you don't pick it up and go. I've got eight different options. You know, you pick it up, and then from there you can decide if you want to stow it or place it down. And it's more visual rather than using words, which is nice. They've got great cues now. So Janan asks, which ship is this? Is this a ship or is this a hab? I thought it was a hab on the station. Read read Janan's full name, Iconia. Janan isn't that, no. awesome? <laughs> Isn't that awesome? I, I respect the guy too much. I'm not going to butcher it. <laughs> gin and tonic. It's, it's, I'll call him Jay. Gin, gin and tonic. Okay. I didn't realize it first, and then I was like, oh, I get it now. <laughs> yeah, I don't know where this Great. is. Yeah. Is it a ship? Is it a station? Is it just some uh, I, um, they were doing space a lot they of have? This on, they were doing a lot of this on that space station. So, okay. um thinking that it might be I like how things hard, hard to I like that area scan they're kind of doing that's that's neat vicinity scan I guess you'd call it okay moving on to the next one yep these might take a second to load in guys apologies for the bad production value here so this is the other version of the FPS scanning so when you when you do your ping you can see the enemies around in the area, you can see that vent over there at the end, that, that gray. So if you want to sneak around, you can go through that vent for your stealth gameplay. Because they said that all these missions, you can do them stealthily and not have to do combat. And generally, 
you're not going to be able to just run and gun through and just kill everybody. It's, you, you're probably not going to make it. I have a question. How do you guys feel about the whole X-ray thing, seeing other, seeing the enemy? I'm, I'm not that thrilled about it. Well, I, I, I get what they're saying is that it, it, it's kind of a, kind of a sonar, and it's only within a certain limited area. It's not like everywhere, and that it, in doing that, that you're going to expose yourself to anybody who has a scanner, and it's like you're going to light up uh, to, to them. So some NPCs won't have scanners, and some NPCs will. Uh, and then other player, most other players will. So you're not going to do this if if you're in a PvP in a situation. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. I just have a weird. I, I don't get me wrong. I love the idea of technology in the future and being able to do certain things. I just wish that they would make it. Um, and I don't know. Maybe they will. There will be some aspect of it takes something to get this to have this. It's not just yeah. something that's easily gotten. Um, maybe maybe it's Banu technology, and you can if you shot by from the Banu, if you happen to stumble across it, you can get it. But I, you well, know, they, I, I, what did we do before there were before there were maps? Before there was X-ray, we used to figure out how to get around around NPCs and, and survive. So I don't know. I just have a. I'm an old guy who remembers back in the day <laughs> when there were no mini maps and stuff, and we had a great time playing games it just seems like it's it's a little bit of hand walking yeah. and, and I, maybe under certain circumstances uh or maybe you let, let's say for example you only get to post that thing five times and it burns out mm -hmm. so now you have to really be particular about when you use it you know but i that's just me yeah, I, 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 to it. griff i totally agree with you the the you'd figure that if this was something that was that pervasive in the universe every single security person would have some kind of like a uh, wristband, like they're either send them a notification, you know, uh, mm -hmm. if someone just did a scan, an area scan or something that it, that it picked up, like a little detector. But that's, but that's, but that's what we were saying is that any other players in PvP situation would have this, and some NPCs are going to have this. And yep. they said that only certain types of armors where you're equipped with this. So it's not okay. It, so I, I missed, I missed this panel, and, and the word you used was, was like a scanner. And to me, a scanner was like an active thing rather than a sensor that would, you know, notify you. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Can I go to something that Robert's saying? Yeah, I know they did talk about downloading the maps. Um, and I know, like, in certain circumstances, like, let's use a city like Lorville, right? I mean, you all know how long it took to figure out where things are. But I also know when I went back and looked, CIG has signs pointing to every freaking thing in Lorville. We've just gotten not used to looking around and, and exploring to a certain degree. Now, I don't mind there being, like, for example, if it's a part of the, the mission, that says if you go here you can download a map that'll help you you know navigate through or find certain things i'm not saying eliminate that total aspect of it i'm just saying let it make sense let it be challenging to players so that we don't come to rely on these things without even thinking about using our brains and exploring a little bit we will grab all the tech because it helps us out from the beginning and we've gotten lazy as gamers i'm preaching y'all yes i'm preaching we've gotten lazy as gamers <laughs> we, yes. we, I, I, that's that's my thing as long I, as they make it smart I don't. I don't have a problem with I, it. I, I do totally agree with that. Is is that they, they they're doing this specifically because most modern gamers uh, 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 go ahead and say it. Go ahead and say it. So, <laughs> sorry, I was. I, 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 I'm getting pinged in Discord and okay. Like, 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 Stop pinging me. <laughs> You're all lazy. That's what he's trying to say. Uh, yeah, I mean, but most modern gamers are much lazier and they. They don't really want to think. They want to be led around by the nose for most everything. And Star Citizen has been the complete opposite of that. But I, but I do agree also that the new player experience is, is horrific. Unless you're like me, where before you play any game, you go and you watch five hours of videos on how to play this game. Like, yeah, but, but here's the other thing. Here's the other thing, though, Joran. Graduate to it grow into it the new player yeah. should not be able to have to come in and play exactly somebody who's been playing for three years you you, you develop not. the game right 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 exactly. i'm just saying develop the game I'm, again i'm not against the tools by the way yes i do use google maps don't be messing with me <laughs> <laughs> but i also know how to read a freaking map that's on paper too 
And, and my point is, is that as long as CIG makes it as a part of the learning curve of the game, because I agree with you, Joe Run, we do want the game to be welcoming to people. We don't want it to be like Eve, where you hear about this tremendous curve and people get frustrated and can't do stuff. I'm just saying, make it thoughtful for that amateur player and still remain challenging for those of us who've been in here freaking seven, eight years, and we still find it challenging too. That's all I'm I, saying. I, I, I don't think there's going to be any question that this is going to be probably one of the most challenging and complex games mm -hmm. at depth. But as they've always said, make it easy. What was it? Easy, <laughs> easy, 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 easy to learn, difficult to master. So you can you can get the basics of it mm -hmm. more easily. But the the depth and complexity of this universe. I, I I feel so bad for people that come in when, that don't want to play STEM until it goes wrong <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and are going to have to try to absorb an encyclopedia. He's going to be pinging you all the time, Joe Ryan. He's going to be <laughs> sending you messages all the time. <laughs> how, how do I jump from this ladder to the, to, to the platform? So, uh, yeah, I, there's, 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 there's there is a lot. You're right. There is, but, but that's that's the evolution of it. Um, guys, I can't watch this guy run the same loop like <laughs> five more times. So let's let's quickly talk about traversal, if you don't mind. Um, yeah, no, because well, exciting. <laughs> so, I just want to say right quick. Well, the, you're the one that jumped ahead. <laughs> Smithy Joe Bob accidentally <laughs> killed you on Saturday, head. Jordan. What's that? Smithy Joe Bob accidentally yeah. killed you on Saturday. Yeah, it was a it was a uh, an unintended. Okay. Steve, I, we we need to put out an APB on Smithy Joe Bob because there's a lot of he's killed you. There's a lot me. of unintentional killing going on, accidents as they happen of of, hey, of Stim, Stim, if, if, persons if you, of renown. If, if you joined us in, in shenanigans, you'd be used to being killed off a lot more often. Uh, <laughs> de death, death, and explosions are are all part of the, part of the fun. Uh, I I told Smithy, it's like Stim isn't used to playing, and he needs a little. <laughs> A, a, a lot of coddling and you know it's like make, make it a good experience for him so that he doesn't feel like frustrated but so, so he'll actually come to play with this one so yes i'm a little bit of a princess when it comes to playing this game okay but but we had made it Answer, thanks, Burrito. like i got a crime stat and then he sent me to jail that was the bad part <laughs> okay so um, I love the traversal that's going on here. My favorite part is that um, you can, you know, fall down to to sub layers and stuff. Uh, but it's the it's the fact that you can jump from a um, from a ladder. You know, like those Onto are and from a ladder anywhere. Yeah, th these are these are freedom kind of. I would love to see more. I don't know about parkour where you can kind of you know jump up walls and that kind of stuff. I don't think it's going to be to that point. But maybe yeah. with the athletic side. So if you Cheers. are if you are upskilling your um, your cheers. physical stats, cheers. Maybe you get to the point where you're able to do things like that, whereas you can't until you reach a certain unlocked level. Well, you're level probably going to be able to ju jump a little farther. You're going to be able to be a little bit more accurate and dexterous, and, and uh, 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 higher dexterity levels, better endurance levels. You certainly aren't going to be able to do this in heavy armor. Rocket Elf says gonna... Mirror's Edge and Star Citizen. Like, think about yes. like, low I, gravity that's, that's parkour. That's the game I was trying to think of. I, I, I was so into parkour there for a while. There's a bunch of movies that came out, and I was watching all these guys on YouTube. It's like, oh, it's so cool, because I used to be such a monkey when I was younger. And, uh, <laughs> I'm not surprised like, Mirror, at all. <laughs> Mirror's Edge just looked so... It's Laura like, Cross Citizen. So amazing. Yeah. I would or love Citizen to Citizen Ninja it. Warrior. Yeah, yes. Well, so, Ultimate so, Citizen Warrior. The, well, the, the, so the, the big comparison here is Assassin's Creed. Um, and everybody who okay. knows me knows I don't really play other games, but I watch lots of videos on other games. And so I guess Assassin's Creed kind of it, it kind of sets the bar for that kind of of, of freedom of, of movement around an environment. Um, who, who else of y'all plays lots of other games that allows that kind of freedom of movement around environments? And I played Cyberpunk 2077, mm -hmm. and we didn't have that. I mean, there were certain places that you could go. I remember when we were trying to get into that that uh, the place where the, the 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 limo company had all those those AI limos that um, went rogue, and you had to sneak around and sneak into the building to get in the back room. But it was still very limited. Uh, feedback on other games that allow a lot of freedom. 
Yeah, Mirror's Edge is like the one of the quintessential ones. Um, oh, yeah. certainly was not there. Hi, Stalker. Thanks for the sub. You mean from a parkour side? Or just, just freedom of movement around an environment all around over a map. the place, um, like like Assassin's Creed. I mean, I've watched a lot of videos on Assassin's Creed. It, it looks amazing for that kind of just jumping and climbing and going all right. over the place and all the um, environments. Far are Cry, the whole Far Cry series. Okay. Um, you, you know, wingsuits. Yeah, bring the, bring them to Star System, please. Yeah. Great face Gr it. Grand just Theft Auto. GTA. GTA has that. I, I uh, never never played it. Uh, Tom Clancy's Ghosts, Ghost Recon. Nice. Can we go back to the previous video? Because I think he was going to miss one of those times. We can. We can. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> All right, moving forward, uh, Joran, you have a you have a query about these hands right here. Sticky hands, yeah. It's like they got to be gecko gloves or magnet gloves or something. Like, how is he stuck to a flat surface with no gravity? Did not explain cups? that. They did not say anything about that. They said that you're pulling yourself across the surface. Mm -hmm. The push, the new push pull system. But they didn't say, well, he's got magnetic gloves or gecko gloves or sticky hands or something. Yeah, and I just want them to just put my mind to rest because I'm very bothered. <laughs> Maybe you got octopus suction. Within 24 hours, there, there will be a CIG post about it. Sorry. Do a magic grab of something as they're flying by way too fast and yeah. not pop their arm out of the socket. Yeah. But I, I am super, super excited for a couple of things here um, having momentum. Uh, because when you jump into EVA now, you have zero momentum, and that's so totally unrealistic. So, like, if, if you're like for all of us who've tried to get to Korea Station and you're flying there and you eject and you want to continue moving towards Korea Station, but you fly and eject and you're stationary in space, <laughs> like de like decoupled mode for your suit. Yeah, yeah, e exactly. Um, certainly looking forward to uh, to this, and just the the, the sheer natural movement uh it it looks like it feels so much better than what we have now so i'm very excited in, to see that in one of the moby glass clips it shows you your suit o2 level and fuel level nice yeah that's always been intended right now we don't have in it's unlimited fuel so you'll have to pay attention to that in the future and use your uh your tractor beam to pull you around grab onto things that that should be limited as well in how much energy it it has. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, they said you have lim limited power, limited limited battery supply. I guess you can have different um, like additional batteries though for your yeah, yeah. Uh, and and also your armor has uh, has power that will recharge your your batteries in your equipment like your energy weapons, your energy magazines. When you put them back on your armor, they will slow, slowly recharge. Uh, That's pretty things cool. like uh, the multi-tools, they'll recharge batteries as well. So this is future intended um, gameplay of those details. So nice. Okay. All the cool stuff. So this is all EVA as well. Yeah. So this is landing on the on, on a surface and moving around on it. Yeah. The marketing the... department should talk to Ryobi or some similar brand for some uh, in-game. <laughs> Advertising for for those rechargeable items. <laughs> yep. Imagine putting a shape charge and blowing that window up. <laughs> yeah. Letting all the uh, atmosphere escape. Mm hmm And this, your point, Joran, about the whether it's magnetic or not. Now, now he's on glass. <laughs> so it's, yeah, it's 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 transparent aluminum. Oh, there you go. <laughs> yeah. Except the aluminum is not magnetic, so it's it's yeah, it's it's it's, it's an alloy. Th well, they they've always said that it's like diamond, they you know, a, a diamond laminate something or something something, where mm -hmm. glass is as uh, as resistant as your armor on your ships. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Cindy says uh, transparentum. <laughs> <laughs> Cool. 
goes back goes back to my gecko gloves. Okay. Oh, this was my favorite part of the entire Citizen Con right Ooh, here. Ooh, really? Gravlev Cargo yes. Slaver Pod. Okay. Yes. This was my favorite thing of the entire Citizen Con right here. Small thing, but huge. Like, who else was super hyped for this? You mean we don't put our prisoners in carbonite? I, not just the, the fact that it's a prisoner pod, but the fact that it is a Gravlev cargo pod. This happens to be for prisoners, or he actually said slave pods. Uh, which was interesting that slaves are actually going to be a thing, confirmed. <laughs> yeah. You know, something that's kind of cool about this is for us to pay attention to development, that there's a progression of how development happens, because obviously we're all familiar with this from Star Wars. And okay. when the when the first uh, tra well, trolleys came out, first thing people said was, why didn't they do this? And and mm -hmm. there is a progression in how things are developed. And a lot of times I know we want to go straight to this, but this was inevitable. And so I think it's a lesson for us to learn to the CIG progression in development because we're seeing it in alpha. Mm -hmm. It's it's take the baby step first. It's the beginning and moving up to things. There's still going to be reasons to have the wheeled trolleys, and they talked about that as well. But of course, like you said, Joe Ron, really excited to see that this is finally here. You know, very very cool. Yeah, and the reason I'm so excited about this is because they, they pitched the Gravlev cargo pods back in 2015. Yeah, with yeah. right, the right. Yep. With the with, with the, um, uh, the the cargo jack and Todd Pappy right. mentioned the cargo right. jack last year, so we knew yep. that that was coming. Um, so th this is part of what reinforces the, their big picture, long term development plans. The details will change over yep. time, but the big picture is still there. They've been working towards this for years, but they didn't. They weren't to this stage, and now we're seeing something that they talked about seven years ago. Mm -hmm. this, you know what um, this this evoked for me just remembering Wing Commander 2 funeral scenes Yeah. because it looks a lot like the coffins they used at where, yeah. and then they would be firing you know off into space yeah. 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 Um, they also when you see them close at the very beginning it looks a lot like the um, the link pods or whatever in Avatar where they get in and then like a, a sort of a chest cage kind of comes down uh, over. Kind of and, and it was also mentioned that, that the Apollo medical pods, the, the medical rescue pods, are going to be very similar to this. Yeah. Well, we saw this in the, uh, remember the reunion video too, remember with the Banu? That was the first time we saw another one of the pods there. Did we? Yeah, remember the Banu that was in the back of the ship in the MSR? You forgotten? Forgot remember she was transporting a Banu in that video. Oh, right. I don't remember that. Her. She went at the end of the video, she went back and talked to the Banu. He's knocked out in the in the cargo pod. Right. And and just just talking. I can't believe you forgot that, Joe Run, really. <laughs> <laughs> and then and then He goes into the secret area at the end of that video and one of those pods is back there and there's a Banu inside of it. And then with the um, with the Those RSI medical ship, the RSI medical ship, um, it's not just like hover or anti grav technology. It's literally you know a, a, a pod that goes out and picks up the body, like it's a self flying, just like the self flying cargo pods. It's a self flying um, casualty retriever pod pod or something. Do you think you can stuff your favorite streamer in there, then toss him out the ship? With the tractor beam? Don't Asking give Smithy friend. Joe Bob any ideas. Asking for a friend. <laughs> it's a drone, says Genetonic. Yeah, that makes sense. That's the, that is the better word. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it looks like a photon torpedo. I'm not going to lie. I should have been switching out of your pods and not using both of them. My batteries are dying. Oh, no. <laughs> Plug in. Track in. So I'm going to switch. switch between them. 9% power. But yeah, no, I'm just, I'm just, I'm super excited about this for cargo because they, as they were talking about moving around the big giant cargo pods, how, like, this... how are you going to do that? How are, and and w when it comes to physicalized cargo in 318, in loading your ship up with the 16 and 32 SU cargo pods, mm -hmm. moving these things around, that's the only, really the only way to do it. it. Using a trolley in a wheeled cart, it's like, have you tried to get a, a, a trolley up a ramp? 
yeah, it would still be really unwieldy, you know, moving a 32 SCU cargo yeah, pod. Yeah, for sure. You know, but using just the, like the a, a jack. The, the only way to do it. Well, the, the the large cargo pods are supposed to have little maneuvering jets, so that's what the the uh, the cargo jack is for, is to control the maneuvering jets. Mm, okay. Very cool. Yep, yep, really cool. Yep. Okay, next video. So they show it going down the stairs. How difficult do you think it would be to go up the stairs? The same way. Yeah, same, yeah. You guys remember how long it took them to get the grab lift technology like really working well. I mean, it took years for them to get it there. And if, they, if we had gotten this earlier, we'd yeah, be, those like... things would be bouncing all over the joint if we had gotten <laughs> yeah. it earlier. I, I so, doubt it's so the same is... technology, though, than the Nox. No, it right? is. That was That's the... where they said it came from. Oh, is it really? Yeah. Same, yeah, yeah. Same oh, wow. Okay. Absolutely. I'll, I'll watch that yep. before the, the panels on Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and 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 th and this is the one where I mean, the, it, it was mostly them just sitting there talking for two hours, mm -hmm. uh, and so it was it was really deep, really meaty, a lot of great information. So it's like it, you really have to watch it two or three two or three times. I'm gonna go back and watch it okay. again uh, at at some point because I mean it's really good information. It's Chris. Um, we we haven't gotten enough nearly enough Chris. So this is super exciting with the with the new maps, and I thought it was great that they're gonna be able to leverage the 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 tech that they already have because they already have all these models and it's going to create all these systemically anywhere you go for any ship any station they don't have to make these mini maps manually right. like every other game does which is just fantastic because there'll be thousands and thousands of locations yeah they said that was one of the benefits to having all the detail that's built into the ships that they can extract it right from there yeah, it's good stuff. It's amazing. You would never see something like this in a single player game like Mass Effect Andromeda. It's something that you would love to see in a game like that, but it would never happen. So it's just it's amazing to have a technology like this. And the assumption is that it would make it in Squadron 42, right? So we're actually going to have this yeah. kind of thing in the single player version of the game, which is a level of detail um, they would never go to or a a, a um, uh, a game design studio wouldn't go to unless it was on the MMO level and still it's a cut above. It, it looks like it could be used very easily too for like, um, you know, wing, the Wing Commander series had all those great mission briefings that were space-based for the most part, but then now you could actually have the, the briefing ahead of time showing where in the ship you got to get to and what you got to do at a terminal or something as and, far as... And stations. Yeah, yeah exactly. Assault, assault, well, storm, let's go storm the castle, kind of a thing. And kind of piggyback off uh, what Ariana says damage control. We're just talking about that. You know, I'm yep. going to an engineering station, looking right at your map of your ship. And, and they um, also yeah, said kinda, that, yeah. that you'll be able to use this to know what doors and airlocks on your ship are open or closed. And, and like FTL, yeah, that. that's awesome. Yeah. yeah, and potentially extrapolating from that, it's like where where are borders on your ship? If you have sensors, okay, well, where are the invaders boarding your ship? Oh my gosh, could you imagine seeing like remote. different sections flashing red? You know, intruder, intruder. <laughs> that's so awesome. Remote decompression. Mm -hmm. Yep, exactly. Yeah. And all, remote all fire control. Be, yeah, all part of uh, part of control from engineering. Turn on different layers. You know, whether it's security, whether it's fire suppression. Uh, whether it's um, uh, life support, I, this kind of this kind of of granular control is what's going to make engineering really an incredible uh, role in a, in a in a capital ship. Yeah, wow! It's so exciting. It's also exciting. Very very exciting. <laughs> <laughs> My goodness, the hype is real. Wow. So yeah, we we didn't get the big giant Christmas present from the thing, Daddy Daddy. Eddie Chris bringing up from the garage. We got, we got a bunch of little down. presents. <laughs> but I mean, there was a lot of really great. We, we got a big, thick, juicy steak. <laughs> we got we got a bunch of stocking stuffers, right? So, <laughs> yeah, we got a well packed stocking. Yeah, yeah it's like lots, lots, lots of stockings. Uh, All right. So, um, yeah. Go ahead. The last note was really about the about the physical attributes. That was I mean, we didn't really have any video of it, but something they talked about uh, was that characters are going to have physical attributes: strength, endurance, agility, and fitness. 
and that you you can work out in the gym or, or doing whatever whatever activity to build those up so that you'll have more endurance that will give you better resistance to g g forces if you're a, if you're a, a dog fighter so a lot of people got pissed off about that it's like whoops like rah, 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 like like someone's gonna have advantages over me because they're working out in the gym um and uh and then also for um uh, techniques is so you have physical attributes and you have techniques so techniques i think is probably one of the more controversial because chris had always talked about was like well there's no uh there's no skill trees in star citizen there's no skill points in star citizen like we deal with in all these other games like the complexity of all, all that sort of stuff like well, i gotta put a, a, a point here and a point there and three points here whereas here we are going to have things that we can work on uh and the techniques are and some of the ones mentioned were for takedowns uh for traversal uh martial arts uh knife fighting so if you practice and you train i guess you go to a trainer in the in the verse that's an expert martial artist and you learn martial arts skills you get better at takedowns and martial arts um is that a thing apparently it sounds like it's going to be um very controversial um it does make sense though when you think about the big picture of the depth and complexity of these things like okay well so right now we have one takedown push middle mouse okay well uh, for as complex as this universe is and if we look back at some of the um uh, some of the, the the inside star citizen around the verse uh videos of motion capture that they were doing uh of some of the martial arts uh combat that they were taking capture of of like doing roundhouse kicks and and all these different I mean, martial arts moves and things like that right now all we have is yeah 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 that's it <laughs> So, um, yeah, I think it's it's interesting. I, I, how are you going to use all those things? Are you going to have to switch to a controller so you can do A, B, C, but double tap A? It's like, I yeah. suck at all yeah. that stuff. So like, that's not me. <laughs> but it's I don't know. It's I don't know. It's it's it adds a whole other level. I think this was one of the other kind of mind blowing things of like, where did this come from? It's like, what are they thinking? It's like, they know they weren't ever going to do this. Like, what is that going to do to the whole universe? Is that going to just like make everything crazy i so, don't know I would, so, I would say go ahead go ahead i'm sorry no. i would say would you if they it sounds like they're going to introduce attributes but would you rather them introduce the attributes on the player or on the like the armors and undersuits that you wear well you'll have those too in, in a way i mean not these attributes but different armor I and mean, you're not going to be able to be very good at uh at hand-to-hand -hand combat if you're wearing heavy armor but not necessarily a combat. I mean, like an exoskeleton kind of thing, right? Where you've got. They've said enhanced... that if you if you go up to an NPC and you're wearing your your undersuit and your helmet, they're going to react to you negatively as opposed to you actually dressed up. You know, certain NPCs. So that could be yep. an attribute. Yep. Yep. Um, I lots wonder if it's and lots and lots of complexity. Yeah, I, I don't know how that'll be played out, but it's you know maybe a, a charisma modifier depending upon what you're wearing or what's more appropriate to the situation. Um, my attributes. so okay let's let's dive in guys to to some of the the events that went on um clearly the panels were were awesome some great information some summing up of what happened over the year uh some uh updating on exactly where they're going with certain things like um anti-grav uh uh slaver pods and stuff like that but one of the amazing events and for me i had the chance to go to uh, Equinox and going to a bar citizen is got to be one of the best ways to experience uh, any kind of watch party. Um, I know that the soul citizens had a watch party, uh, finding your favorite streamer, finding your favorite community, hanging out with those people and just having a good time is really what it's about. And going to Stem, Stem Iconia redeemed all of us need to take a drink. Ah, Iconia. Cheers I, was to bar citizens. I was thirsty. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers to Bar Citizens and Equinox, an amazing looking event. Cheers. This, so this was the Bar Citizen beforehand. So the Bar Citizen was on the Friday night. Uh, we went to this amazing place called Level One Gaming and Bar, or I Bar and Arcade. That place. Uh, yeah, you were there last time. And 
Uh, it was yeah. a great time. They've got arcades everywhere. You're looking at the bar here, so this is not a great shot to see everything that's that's around. But there's arcade machines. There are consoles. There's pinball. Um, and, you know, they've got uh, TV screens and projectors. So you can really just take advantage of that sort of nerdy area and talk about your favorite stuff. I mean, there's, there's subject matter all around you to talk. It's a really great bar. Then... The next day, well, well, and there's just a little bit of hangout. You can see some of the arcades there. Some good people in that shot. Uh, on the right hand side, people. Enterprise, of course, Shadowkin in the in the uh, front who runs Shadow Corp that put on Equinox. And then here we have the Equinox event. Here's the turnout on Saturday. A great, great turnout. Um, Very I cool. I don't want to spend time going through absolutely everybody that's in the shot. There's so many amazing people in here, but we've got. Um, uh, Star Jump Grim here, uh, Star Jump Ender. Uh, we've got Jad Jad sitting down at the bottom. We've got a whole bunch of the Star Fab or JRDF team. JRDF came out and did a great shop, uh, job. We have Texas Skulls. Uh, we've got a whole bunch of people. We've got big banners. We've got Lego Scorpius. Uh, that was, uh, I'm trying to remember his name. I apologize. Uh, but just like a, a, a fantastic community putting this together. And all over there were screens. Uh, that we were following the con, uh, all the panels that were nice. on, and it was simulcast awesome. throughout the entirety of the facility, uh, which is really good. And you can see there's a second level up there. Oh, it, was, it was fantastic, Jordan. It's really a great time. Um, there's that yeah. panel. There's that panel that, that, that came through. You and, can see. and great art that looks like a Haskaha photo. <laughs> it is indeed. You can see Haskaha's logo there, uh, as well as yep. JRDF, who are, who are also sponsors of the event. Uh, here's one just sitting around talking to um, the JRDF or Starfab team. Just hanging out. You see Sigelian in the back, Jadjad there. Uh, just hanging out and having good conversations. Here is that Scorpius uh, that was built. And I'm absolutely killing myself for not remembering his name. I really apologize. But this is an incredible thing. Um, there's LEDs on the tips. Um, the wings fold back. They also close like the X-Wing. Um, it looks like, but it doesn't articulate, is it's on a roller that goes back, uh, the, 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 the turret. So, Very cool. It's absolutely amazing. Yeah. Really amazing. They're saying in chat the name is Strato, Strato Brick. Brick. Yes. Uh, Victoria, yeah. good to see you. Good to see you. Yeah. Uh, Victoria, another great citizen that was there. Uh, one thing, there's a lot of prizes, and I won, and I'll show you very quickly. Blow it up a little bit here. This fantastic hand painted by Victura um, oh, wow. concierge logo, uh, signed and printed on the back. Very nice. uh, this was there were a number of these given away, um, and just like an amazing contributor and and a really cool guy in the verse as well. So I've got to figure out where I'll put that on the panel. I think it would look great right here in the middle yes all right and pressing forward i posted uh one picture of san diego versus ah okay which guy yep. okay we'll mm -hmm. we'll get mm -hmm. to it we'll get to it uh this is just sort of more in the area kind of looking up to the top again you've got the great guys there uh at jrdf uh jrdf actually put together a pop-up um uh, booth in order to purchase stuff and they did very well uh, some great citizens loving it it was an nice. awesome opportunity to see them in person and really get a chance to you know um, uh, engage and purchase some of those and then of course the banu cube was there and it's, it's amazing you know it sits it, it would sit there lit up in blue and then you pick it up it starts to uh, shine in multicolor hues and then oh, wow. you'd had these clues that you had to go through so you had to press the buttons in the right sequence to answer the questions based upon the colors so it's kind of like a you know the a simple simon i think like it's, a simon yeah like a simon. <laughs> yeah kind of like that um uh but you know it wasn't like you were following a pattern you just had to match it up when it was when it was playing the right color um that's so and, awesome yeah and you won an in-game banu cube so just a really neat concept a fantastic um you know piece of uh, community lore now uh, that kind of ties into the game. Uh, Enterprise was streaming the whole thing. He had a, a dedicated booth there, which he could he could use. It's a fantastic arena. Uh, their streamers can, you know, if they're traveling, it's a place they can go and actually do their stream. 
Uh, he also walked around the event with a uh, with a microphone and did interviews throughout the throughout the event. Uh, and here's just a few areas that you can see all of the different PCs. That's the same area from two different directions, and then another another area. And there's even uh, two tournament rooms as well, uh, where uh, myself and Segelian were. And then up top, uh, there's a whole bunch of PCs as well. Um, on the other side, uh, you've got um, this area where you've got a bar and a kitchen um, and, and the, the food cool. and the drinks were tailored with Star Citizen themes. So um, uh, Victoria uh, made uh, one of the one of the uh, cocktails. I don't know if he made them all, but he was definitely uh, uh, pivotal in making some of them. So you had like a microtech uh, microtech mule <laughs> was one of them. Nice. Uh, so yeah, it was, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, of... which don't forget, Buster is running her contest that we're trying to promote as well. Uh, I don't know if we still have a link from last week on that, but speaking of Star Citizen themed drinks, sorry to, sorry to interrupt. Yeah, just, no, no, go please. Yeah, brought, brought that back up, back up. Yeah, That's but Buster, right. uh, Buster Destroyer is running a contest. She's giving away uh, one or two ships, uh, which is like absolutely I mean, phenomenal prizes, and. Um, uh, I think it's on her Twitter that she has um, has that where you can come up with a creative Star Citizen themed drink uh, recipe, and those will be judged on November first. So we're down to two weeks. Two weeks. Perfect. For that. Every time someone says two weeks, I just get a little chuckle. Can't help myself. I always do too. <laughs> yes, all of us old nerds. Two weeks. <laughs> so this is just one of the giveaways that, that, that were done. There were so many giveaways. It was almost like everybody got something. Um, there were, um, yeah, there were, and, and some of the big giveaways uh, were actual, you know, ships and models from GRDF. Uh, but there were also these amazing posters that were put together. Uh, there were also. There's Master's Twitter for anybody who wants to go check out the information. She's got that uh, pin, uh, pin tweet there. Yep. So go ahead and jump in that, guys. Uh, good chance to win a ship there. All right. Um, this one here, uh, Segelian, uh, one, one of, or actually, I think that was a, I think that was a present, uh, from Victura, uh, and just a, just a fantastic, uh, couple of guys there, uh, good, good friends. I'd like to count them as, so, uh, just a wonderful time. That was in one of the tournament rooms. And then here is a flag that, uh, a lot of people went and signed, including myself, uh, to send off to CIG. Uh, thanking them for this amazing game uh, and project uh, and universe uh, that we all know and love. So thank you very much, CIG and uh, Shadowkin. Thank you very much for putting on this awesome event. It was fantastic. I highly recommend to go to the next one. Yeah, it was really great. So much energy put into it, and it's a fantastic time. So really well done. All right. Um you posted Iconia. You posted something into chat. You were saying mm -hmm. of which mm -hmm. of which event? Show chat. Show chat. Show chat. Show chat. Perfect. Twitch, TwitchCon Bar Citizen. I um, right. yeah. I found 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 somebody to to put that on, and and she did a phenomenal job. Uh, Rick Sasses or uh, what, what's her name again? Um, scroll back through several hundred messages. <laughs> uh, uh, Raxus, uh, mm -hmm. Ohin Kazaki, uh, and I missed, missed, missed her, her name and her, and her profile in discord for, for he, but it's, it's, it's a, she, she's a very, uh, very, very nerdy, um, um, uh, jump lover as well. Oh, great. She, it owns, I'm new to the jump club. She owns an 890, discovered her through this. Yeah. I was in the, um, uh, the, the California discord uh, asking, it's like, Hey, who can put together and find a location and put this together for. For TwitchCon, Bar Citizen, uh, a couple of months, a month and a half ago, thereabouts. So she was checking all around because it's really, really hard to find a venue smack downtown in a big city with a massive convention going that'll, you know, let you put on something for 30, 40, 50 people. Um, and so she found a great, great venue. We got it out there and she had a great turnout. I see DJ Knight there. I see um, uh, Iralia there. I see Ver Verity there. Uh, Konya was there. Who who else is there that I recognize? There are a few, a few uh, other people. Zero State's there somewhere. Zero State, yep. Enhance. Enhance. 
Yeah, I kind of recognize some people, but I don't remember their, their exact names. But uh, yeah, great, uh, great turnout there. What a great community. Yep. So so glad that we had another. I would do that every uh, every year for Twi for TwitchCon. We get to have a good bar citizen because a lot of folks go out there. I think fewer star citizen streamers went out there because it was the same day as TwitchCon. Uh, yeah. And also, some people still weren't quite ready to uh, um, uh, travel and do a big convention with uh, uh, residual COVID out there. Yep. yep, it's certainly a concern. Um, Iconia, great, great picture. That's really good. Thank you. Um, upcoming bar citizens, or let's let's talk about yeah, what yeah, bar citizens. Yeah, the, the website there. Yeah, yeah, let's pull it up. I, so I didn't get a chance to, gra to grab them. Well, I know we have some coming. So it looks like there's a few happening on October fifteenth. That's a Saturday. Oh, it's a Saturday. Yeah, including well, the virtual weekend, bar somewhere. citizen. So this one yes. here, so let's talk about this very, very quickly. Um, uh, I, I want to make sure we give it its, its fair due. Um, Soul Citizens and the Yacht Club are putting on this virtual uh, Zoom Bar Citizen. Um, it's nicer. If you could post the link, that would be great. Guys, we already have 130 people signed up for this. It is going to be a big Zoom call. It's going to be fantastic. You're not going to want to miss it. On this show, we've had a chance to hear our thoughts, Tim, I got a picture for you. but you haven't really had a chance to discuss with others, uh, you know, what's going to be going on. So um, it would be fantastic if, if you want to jump in and have your chance to share yeah. your thoughts um, on what's going on. Here's a picture from uh, the May um, one that we had back Invictus. in May. Invictus. Yeah. yeah, we had a huge turnout for that. So and it's just people yeah. getting together and talking and and what we do is we run through th this time we're going to run through all of the panels uh, and then we break out into breakout rooms and we try to keep it to about 25 people per breakout room so that we can have a few panelists that sit at the top and answer the questions uh, and then people can raise their hand and get brought up to the top and you can have a chance to ask a question and it gets a discussion going. Uh, and you get a chance for a bit of a follow up if your question wasn't fully answered in it or if it you know sparks something else. So it's a really engaging um, uh, way to, to to connect. It gives you a chance to really um, get to meet and understand the personalities of those people that you're seeing their names in chat, you know, everywhere you are, but you haven't had a chance to actually meet them and put a face in the name. And it'll make you more likely to want to go to CitizenCon or one of these larger events like Equinox and meet your fellow star citizens, which I got to tell you. Or even just a small local bar citizen. It's yeah. not just about the gigantic ones. Yeah. No, I, 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 I know. <laughs> <laughs> but, but Jordan, I, like, I'm, I'm just trying to get across like how, oh, sure, how, sure. how special it is to be able to share in your life this project with people that that are close friends right so the 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 relationships we make online they're they're, they're, they're very important yes um but the chance to actually meet in person discuss things uh to be able to you know when you're thinking about that person have have a know how they look you know all of that kind of stuff as well and their personality it makes that engagement later on discord so much more rich because you understand their personality more right uh they say that 55 percent of the message is in the body language that we communicate uh, and only 7% of the message actually being in the words. I have no idea how much uh, emotes give us, but y you get the idea. You know, meeting in person 100%. really adds a, an additional layer to that. Scientific study. <laughs> you heard it here first. <laughs> that's, that's old facts, by the way, really old facts. But yeah, I, I, there's over 60 different discords around the world for bar citizen uh, communities most states around the country and regions and, and uh, different countries in all over Europe, Asia, South America, Australia, New Zealand, uh, Hawaii, uh, Japan, like so, just so many places have bar citizen communities. And if there's not one near you, there are going to be other nerds not far from you yep. that you don't know yet that yep. are out there. And before, before we depart from the virtual bar citizen uh, concept and go into the more local bar citizens, uh, Griffin, did you want to say a few words about the virtual bar citizens? Uh, y you, were the, you were the originator of these, and it's been such a great journey uh, at the Yacht Club to be able to share uh, hosting um, the, the, 
virtual bar citizen, but you know, um, you want to maybe say a few words about why you started it, um, and, and, uh, what you think, you know, why people should join this one coming up on Saturday. Yeah, thank you. Well, as I mentioned earlier, you know, one of the things about CitizenCon uh, to me is uh, social interaction. You know, it's great to hear from CIG, but it's also connecting with the people. And because of COVID, we weren't able to do the bar citizens uh, that we normally would do the day before the convention would start. So I contacted Joe Run um, because they are actually, as you know, the originators of Bar Citizen. And I said, hey, how would you feel about if we were to do this in a virtual way so that we can connect? And not only that, uh, get to connect with people who just aren't in our local areas because we weren't having local bar citizens due to COVID, uh, but we were able to also connect with people from around the world. And so <clears throat> he felt it was a great idea. We partnered with Yacht Club and basically we've been just kind of doing this together um, for almost three years now, for at least the last two years we've been doing them. And they've been great ways to meet people both locally as well as internationally. So uh, the other thing that's been great is that CIG has embraced it and supported it as well. And so they've always been in communication with us uh, by participating. I think at one point we had like maybe nine devs that came and sat in with us uh, on one occasion <clears throat> and shared and talked with us. And of course, we've had great uh, support uh, from Disco, uh, from Zylo, uh, from Jake in particular, Knight Rider. They've been there yeah. faithfully and literally uh, and for the more, most part, and more. they've been there. Yeah, and more. But they've been there like they sit there, guys, for the whole six, seven, eight, nine 10 hours with us uh so it's been really nice so hopefully this time because this is after the convention uh that gives them a little bit more flexibility because they've just gotten off last week so hopefully we'll have a good turnout Zyla told us that he got some information out to some of the employees so we'll see who shows up we never know who's going to show up but it's always been supported by cig so if you guys can come you're always welcome to come and hang out with us whether you can it doesn't make a difference if you're there at the beginning we're there for six seven hours so drop in when you can if you can hang out for the whole time Eight, come nine, and have fun hours. We ain't doing that. <laughs> we ain't doing that. So my Zoom is cutting off at a certain time. So anyway, yeah, yeah. we do have a good time there, and we do hang around uh, quite often because it's great for people to get together and connect. So that's it, yeah. basically. So it starts at uh, 3 p.m. Eastern time, uh, noon uh, Pacific, and goes until, I believe, 8.30 p.m.? Is that right? Uh, it, no, it's six hours. It, it's six it's from hours, 3 p.m. Okay. till 9 p.m. Right. And if we go over, it's not a big deal. You know, people can, like I said, they can come and go when they want, you know. Yeah, you, you, you let us just kind of hang out and, and chat. And, and it's at, after the, the, the structured part, it just kind of becomes like whoever just wants to continue just hanging out mm -hmm. and chatting. And, and we, we try to keep it still I, um, from getting out of hand. Folks ra raise their hands to, to, to talk. and uh, But we tend to have more free-flowing conversations. Some people tend to be a little bit more talkative than others. I wouldn't know anything about that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and, and then there's folks that they just want to hang out and listen mm -hmm. and just be part of the, you know, and, and listen to everybody else who's talking and just get the experience. So hanging out with, uh, with more citizens because we don't get this nearly enough. Perfect. Okay, let's dive uh, back more into the upcoming Bar Citizen. So obviously we have the virtual Zoom Bar Citizen, which uh, if you can't attend one in person, I highly recommend you come because uh, it will be a fantastic time. Otherwise, if you are in um, the Dallas-Fort Worth area, they have their amazing crew that gets together so frequently, uh, also happening this Saturday, uh, as well as um, the post-Sitcon Bar Citizen. Uh, it doesn't say where it is. Jordan, any guess on that? Um, well, which word? Sorry, I was uh, uh, replying the, to... Uh, the second the, line uh, um, in, in the list. Oh, I let me put it up so it's big screen. There we go. The second line in the list. Post it gun, bar citizen. Uh, shoot, I need to go back and double check. Uh, <laughs> I, I hate when folks folks do that. Thing they they'll they just assume that that you know that they're doing it in their local in their local city and they have the other information there. But in the title, it's like, oh, we're having a post citizen gun, bar citizen. But it's like, where? <laughs> <laughs> These things happen. Yep. All right, and then uh, upcoming later in the month, um, about a week later on the the next Saturday, we have Minnesota, and we also have a bar citizen and concierge gaming lounge, a maximum 80 people in Munich. Wow. That sounds fun. That sounds really good. That sounds almost like the Equinox event from a, from a, a number of machines and playing and that kind of thing. That's pretty cool. Um, and then CIG comes to New Jersey. 
That sounds like a that's a week yeah, after so, that, so the end of October. Uh, yeah, so that's that's going to be one of the big regional ones, and we'll probably see. I think he's got well over 100 people already registered for that one on Great. the 29th, and uh, that's going to be a really big one for anybody and within several hours of driving distance of uh, North Brunswick, New Jersey. Uh, go to that one. Uh, they are sending uh, Jake and somebody else out to uh, to that one. Great, and then last but not least. Um, in starting in November, we've got two sitting on the first Saturday of November, and that is Chicago Midwest and Sacramento. So if you're in Chicago, those areas, uh, Ari and Griffin. Ooh. Yeah, and for that one, we should probably change it to be Chicago suburb slash Midwest, but because we it's technically a suburb, but does it matter though? The largest like, suburbs. So. For, 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 yeah, for anybody outside of of Chicago proper, um, mm-hmm. it's. We it's all refer to the, yeah. Yeah, that area, that, that metropolitan area is Chicago. It's like anything in Southeast Florida, it's Miami. I don't say that I live in <laughs> the Hollywood or Fort Lauderdale. It's like, I live in Miami. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. close enough. It is Naperville, which Naperville is getting national attention and being named like the, the one of the best cities in the world or in the country to live in, not the world. Nice. I used but, to live there. Yeah, if, they, right now. If, they, if they go to the map, they'll see I'm the exact location. It wasn't good enough for me, so I moved away. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> Too good for Naperville. Well, let's hit the Q&A, guys. It's getting late, and let's make sure we can answer some questions. All right, we have six questions. If you do have a question and you want to get it in, now is your chance. Um, the first one comes from Roy McAvoy. Uh, could you do a segment on the issue council question mark um, on how to submit proof of a bug, et cetera? Oh, that's a good one. That's a good one. It's, it's probably better for someone that's doing a YouTube video to do something like that, though. Yeah. If you have questions, uh, we actually have a lot of people that are very active in the issue council in the Yacht Club. Uh, we've got a lot of people that are in Evocati that are pros. Uh, I know his divine shadow um, <laughs> says he doesn't know how to use it. He's, he's probably one of the best at, at using it here in our community. Uh, join the Yacht Club Discord. Um, any questions about Star Citizen all week, any anytime, we've just got a really super active, helpful community. Um, if there's always something to ask if you have questions about pretty much anything. It's like, why isn't this thing working? It's like, well, if you do this, that, and the other, and you stand on your leg, then um, it's really good to work. I, I think I think this is a particularly good question, though, and I, not not that I'm you know judging questions and rating them, but what I really like about this question is that there's a lot to that. Um, you know, wh- before you submit a ticket, you should look to see if there's another ticket that presents the problem that you can upvote. You know, rather than having a whole bunch of tickets that are all for the same thing. Um, so yeah, I really do like that. Or you can add your scenario to that particular ticket. So there, there, there is a, there is a, a, a nuance and a better really way of doing those. It is really hard yeah. to, to do the search. Um, for me, I, when I, I am, I am terrible. I, I feel so bad because I, I, I jump in into, into PTU and wave one and I just go and just do all the stuff. Uh, and I, I don't typically submit tickets, uh, even though I experience all, all the bugs. But what, what I will often do is I will just go to the issue council uh, after I've played the PTU for a little bit, and then I'll, I'll, I'll scroll down all the recent recent bugs, and anything that I see that's like, I experienced that, I experienced that, I experienced that, then I'll go through and I'll, I'll duplicate so that I, I will at least contribute to things that I've experienced to add visibility to it, because that's as important as submitting a new bug, because... It, if it doesn't break 10 or whatever the threshold is to be uh, verified, nobody's ever going to see it or do anything about it. And even if it gets to that level, they're still triaging thousands and thousands of bugs. I think they said there's like tens of thousands of bugs every major patch, mm-hmm. and they've got to triage those. So, Smithy it's... Joe. Sorry, sorry, Joy. Smithy Joe no, Baba asks magnet gloves, how do they work? Short answer we have no idea. <laughs> None no whatsoever. Idea. No, um, magnets. N- n- nanotechnology. Yeah. Um, yep. all, all the little bots are, are the other way with their little legs towards the, <laughs> the surface. Quantum um, nanobots. Okay. I like it. What J- else? Jadad has two questions. The first one is, given the environment we see of pyro, do you think the fauna or flora will be aggressive or docile? In pyro? I think we'll have some of both. Yeah. In, in both. pyro? Uh-huh. Yeah, the, the 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 crab is one of the things in pyro. We know that one's there. 
I mean, but yep. I, I don't. I want to see the boreal stalker. I mean, I literally want it to be when you get off your ship. You're more worried about fauna than you are a person being out there. That's <laughs> what I really want to happen. That'll be cool. I have a theory on the last one on the gloves. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. do, you, do you want to run through the question? I, th I, I think you have to have a friend with you who has a wool sweater and you have to rub your hands all over them. Really <laughs> <fast>. Wow. <laughs> Smoking like a true northerner. <laughs> all right. What's a sweater? What's a, right? oh a jersey? <laughs> a pullover? California, oh, California. I, wear, I, I wear shorts all year. I live in Miami. <laughs> SoCal. A cardigan? Keep uh, going. Jad Jad asks, uh, does the panel think investigative missions will be one-off events? Um, might they be AI generated by player interactions? I think they're going to be bespoke. Um, I, there might They might well come up with a way of them being player, being uh, procedurally generated, which would be very cool. Like, you know, maybe the data. Is closed. We're about to run it. Good luck, everybody out there. Good luck, everyone. Da, 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 da. Uh, so Spartan Zero has won a Crusader E1 Spirit LTI. Missed it. Spartan Zero, are you here? Yeah, you have to respond. We need you to respond in chat. Spartan Zero. Spartan Some, Zero. Someone spang him. There we go. Thank Spartan, you, Robert. Only, only so Spartan 85 is in chat. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> there he is, rigged. He, he is. says, <laughs> so far, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> congratulations, so Spartan. Congratulations, congrats. Um, Brand new shiny spirity one, awesome. Yeah, reach out Are to T Nightster. Uh, between uh, him and Joran, him and Joran, then we'll arrange that to get to you. Congratulations, T yeah. Nightster will get all, all your details and we'll get, get to that here pretty soon. You, you owe everyone in chat a free ride in it. That's at right. some point. <laughs> Free ride. Okay. Spark tour. Take it easy. Uh, my man, right there. Oh, sorry. <laughs> that uh, might have had too much moonshine. <laughs> You'll meet both. It's the Moonshine Brothers are singing away here. Uh, what's Griffin Gaming RPG's background? This comes from Nobody Hears You. Griffin? I sent it to him. He was uh, curious, so I DM'd him. He's curious about my background. Cool. Is it something you want to share with everybody, or it, no? You, are you saying nothing to <laughs> see here? My background. <laughs> no, I don't Move want to along. share with everybody. He's <laughs> denying his background. No, I don't mind sharing it. Uh, I can, I can get some tea nights and he can pass it out. Sure, I have a couple sure. variations of it, so I won't feel bad. That's right, Wolf. This is my full resume. Just uh, stand by. Um, well, like seventy percent of the people in the virtual bar citizen are going to have Griffin's background. There you go. There you go. Um, okay, last one, Smithy Joe Bob. Oh dear, I always worry when Smithy asks a question. Uh, does Chris subtly confirm Teverin Kung Fu? Yes, I think so. And then, what was the Bushido clan? Bushido clan? Yeah, they're kind of Bushido, like their style and stuff like that. That's not the Xi'an, that's not the Xi'an, is it? Someone will say it. You, but I like you already. Um, I, I don't know that there was Bushido in, uh, in Star Citizen. It, was, it wasn't it Teverin, because was Teverin, Teverin, Teverin are like the turtles, right? No, the Teverin are the are the birds, oh, the and turtles. they're the, the, the warlike uh, the warlike bird species. Uh, so, here I'm thinking yeah, Ninja Turtles. Fun. There we go. Yep. And Rocket Alfred, him, all host in, take a drink. Cheers. It's been a great Teenage show. Mutant, mutant. Great hanging out yeah. with everybody. Cheers, everyone. Griffin, Iconia, great to have you back on. And it was a great, it was a great week. Great Citizen Con. It was great covering it. So much great stuff. Got to go watch it again. <laughs> definitely, mm -hmm. definitely. Twice. Thank you for having me. Thanks ah, again. Awesome having you. Yeah, and Griffin. Yes, uh, always great having you, man. Um, looking forward to to Saturday. So for those of you, make sure you get in on Saturday. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Um, Yes. Griffin Iconia, thanks for thanks for coming on. Um we have a raid for Cobra TV. Ooh, lots Ooh, of fun. Cobra's up late. Awesome. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Well uh thank you, Ariana, uh, Joran and Sin for having me. I appreciate that. Pleasure. Well, good to have you back, man. You have a good time? Yeah, hell yeah. I, I want I want to come again. Nice. This, this is this is awesome. I, sure. I enjoy this. Nice, we'll make it happen. It's like, it's like a little virtual bar citizen. Hell yeah. Uh, 
Can everybody vote in chat if they like Diconia, if they want him back on? <laughs> <laughs> it's going to happen whether you like your, it or I, not. I don't want to break your chat by all the ones, okay? <laughs> all right, guys. We have our raid ready and queued up. Uh, please, when you get there, say hi to Cobra TV. Have a fantastic time with him. He puts on such an amazing show. Um, and please, you know, let him know where you came from. Uh, spam his channel. Get his attention. And... Uh, and share in this amazing project with him and everyone that's in the channel and with each other. Thank you so much for coming. Look forward to seeing you on Saturday, if you'll be there. Uh, and great to see everybody at CitizenCon, at, at uh, Equinox, or whether it was a watch party or everything, this event. Um, I think it was a great event. I think we had a great time. Um, we can judge it halfway from here to the moon. Uh, but in my, in my book, it was a good one. Hope it was the same for you guys. Come to Chicago. Yes, Chicago Bar Citizen. Fun. Good night, everybody. Night, everyone. Good to see you. We'll see you next week. Night, We're in the Discord. Come hang out with us in the Discord. Awesome. Invite me again. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have you back on. All right, cool.